you to rumble. Okay, good evening. And welcome to the uh, 5 p.m. Village of Mamarian Board of Trustees work session. Uh, I need a motion to open the meeting. So move. So move. Uh, who's taking a roll? You're taking a roll? I Sal am. Yes. All right, hold roll, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Uh, Nora, you're muted. Yes. To four? Not here yet. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, next item is the adoption of the agenda. So move. Second. OK, I just want to point out that something on new business uh, 2A is on for the regular meeting. And that is because it is very important to the uh, legal situation between a village and save the sound. So I, I would just note that that's the only item that's on for the regular meeting. Okay, call the roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Mayor Murphy? No. Okay, thank you all. Uh, we have two visitors tonight uh, who one is a village employee and one is a uh, a volunteer. So as is the want of the board, we're going to take those uh, folks first. Uh, we, we're going to do uh, the, the Harbor Master first. And Jeff, you're here to speak on which topic? Just remind me again. Okay, Harbor Isle items. A uh, request for additional funds to complete dock replacement project and proposed fee for fishing charter. Oh, yes. That's nice. Uh, so the floor is yours. This is item on the agenda 2G. Okay, so for the first one, the lumber for the dock rebuild, by the time we ordered it and by the time we received the shipment, the price increased of about $10,000 for the lumber. So I need additional funds because now I'm short to pay for the other materials that are just coming in now to finish up the dock build because of the, we ran over on the lumber. Um, so that about sums that one up. And then the fishing charter is, I have a uh, charter boat company that's out of Nourishell now and they're looking for a new place to relocate. So I offered them our guest dock that we haven't used it's not really a good guest dock for transients to use because they need a dinghy to come in and out of to that dock, which for him actually works out great because he doesn't want his boats near the other boats on the dock. So he's looking for something that kind of gets him away and off the dock where all the people are. So he was interested in that for the fee of uh, $13,000 for the season for two boats. And then that would also bring in about additional 30 cars, 30 to 40 cars per day for each charter. He runs two charters a day. So they would pay additional parking, you know, to the park. Um, what's the name of his boats? Uh, Soundbound charters. Okay. Is that party boats or just charter? Just charter fishing. They don't do any kind of booze cruises or anything like that. They just fish. Is it like the Shamrock or something like that? Is that the, the, the one? It's, it's along those lines. His, his names of his boats are Soundbound. That's okay. the name of the boats. Trustee Natchez has a question. Oh, he's here. Mute. Dan, you're muted. Trustee Natchez, you're muted. Dan. Uh, okay, there you go. Okay. okay. I don't know quite how that happened, but my question is, are you talking about the docks that are in the mooring field or the ones along the shore? The ones that are, you know, uh, like right across from Nichols, they sit on the pilings there, on two pilings. Okay. In the West Basin, across from Nichols, it would be the easiest way to describe it, it would be that dock. And where, where would they board? He's going to run the boats over to the boat ramp and board there. His charter is leave at eight o'clock in the morning and about six o'clock at night. 
So those two times of the day, he would run over, pick up his charter, you know, his clients at the boat ramp. Okay. Any other questions? I, I guess my question is this, is, is this, all right, you know, I, I grew up going to Sheep's Head Bay and going to the party boats there. Uh, is, is, so you just showed up that day. If you had your 20 bucks, you got on a boat and you fished. Is, is that what this is? Or is it, I'm calling now, up and I'm reserving. He, he, has a, he has a book with him for the day so that he kind of knows who's coming because he tries to coordinate, you know, because he runs two boats, he can't make sure that he has 100 people show up and then he can't fit them. So okay. they, they book through him and then, so he regulates who, who's getting on what boat. Okay, Trustee Natchez again. Uh, <clears throat> you say he's relocating from Nourishell. Why is he not staying in Nourishell? He, he's out at Dudley's now. He runs out of a private marina there at Dudley's where the restaurant is. And there's some new owners there and they're not going to open the docks this year. So I'm actually kind of competing with the city of Nourishell because the city of Nourishell is trying to get him to go there to them because of the revenue that he brings in with the parking and that stuff. So, I mean, he, he may very well, if this doesn't get approved, then that's, he'll probably go to the Nourishell Marina. But I'm trying to compete with them a little bit to bring in some revenue. So what did you say it would be, 13,000? Yeah. 13,000 for the docks and then whatever parking, you know, he brings in. And, and we have ample parking, right? Yes, yeah. Well, I, I could say from my point of view, and, and is you know, I, I would definitely appreciate the revenue, and this is something that I would definitely use uh, because I, I've gone out on these more than a few times with my sons, uh, and I would look forward to doing it. I, I would do it by myself. Yeah, trustee Natchez. I don't have any problems with it, but I would want to make sure that uh, we have proper insurance. Um, right. To, that you know totally covers us and don't know if there's a way but i think we need to regulate that there can be no drinking or carrying of booze uh, to or from the boat i don't think we can carry, regulate what goes on in the boat but we can right. say that he can't bring you know alcohol or whatever uh, because because okay. once they're in the park and they have that we it's very hard to police okay okay yeah, the, the only way you can drink in the park is with permission of board trustees. Um, this is. Go ahead, Victor. Just a quick question. Uh, anything for a resident? Uh, same price for non residents and non resident Where is Victor? For. I, I don't know. Community. I'll put my video when I, when I, as soon as I did land on my computer, I'm still commuting the mayor. I'm sorry, but I'll be joining you live soon. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Can you? So his question is: Is there a different? Is is there a discount for residents? But this isn't a village-run program, right? Right. It's not a village-run program now. But he was very um, willing to do something for the day camp. You know, for the village day camp, if the village wanted, you know, to do like a day fishing trip for the camp, because he's done that in the past for Nurshell, or and to do stuff with Kyle. You know, if Kyle wanted to you know, go out for a day and fish to get stuff for her tanks. He's more than willing to do stuff like that because he was on the website and he actually called me about that today. So, but as far as I'll have to ask him if there's a discount for the residents, I did not ask him about that. Thank you. Thank you, actually. The, the, thank you for answering that larger issue of, uh, you know, opportunity. So thank you. I think that's, that's the idea. Thank you for keeping that in the loop. Yeah. Su suggest don't demand. Okay. Uh, Mayor, that? Oh, it's mention, it? mention it, don't insist. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry and I are quoting our favorite movie, The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, is, is that all you have for us tonight, Jeff? Yes, that, that's it for me. All right, thank you, Jeff. Any oh, one question or comments? Yeah, yeah. The $10,000 uh, price hike was on a bill of how much for the lumber, Jeff? 
Uh, the final bill, the, the original quote was 19,000. It came in at 29, was the final okay. bill once, once it was delivered. Wow. Well, yeah, no, no, I get it. I get it. Yeah, no, no, I'm just curious. So. <laughs> Mayor, yeah, would you, you like these items on the next meeting? Yeah, I mean, it's fine with me. Is everybody fine putting this on the next, for the next meeting? Absolutely. Yes. I know the charter boat guy was kind of in a rush, not a rush, but just kind of needed an answer because if this doesn't go through, he's got to find another spot. You you, you can tell him that he, he should, you know, that, that, that it was looked upon favorably and by favorably means we put it on for a regular meeting. Okay, very good. Tell him not to demand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, we, we have many members of Thank you, the RAC Committee for the Environment. And they were talking about this uh, a while back when I was their liaison, and uh, it, it, there was not enough time to do it last year. And this has been something that they've been uh, advocating for a long time. This is the stretch code. So, would you would you like to just give us a summary of it? Uh, sure. Liam. Yeah. Okay. So Can you lead the charge tonight. I will. Can you all hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, the stretch code is an um, the village would adopt it as a um, extension of its building code. So essentially it's a um, requirement that the building code is, the buildings are a little bit more efficient. So it covers things like um, the building envelope, um, reducing the operational costs, um, sort of just, it's, um, it's, you know, it's probably more technical than I could explain to you, but, um, the idea is that uh, you would adopt it and that um, it would lead to more efficient buildings as you move forward, energy efficient. Um, one of the points about it is that, you know, periodically the building code becomes more efficient. So what the stretch code is, is basically where the building code will be in a few years time anyway. So you're just sort of getting ahead of the curve. Um, it's been adopted by a number of other municipalities around um, Westchester, starting off with Hastings on Hudson. I think they were the first ones. Um, and we have New Rochelle and I think the town of Mamaroneck have adopted it. Uh, so the Committee of the Environment sort of believes that this would be a, a prudent thing for the village to do. Uh, there was a couple of weeks ago, a Sustainable Westchester had a, um, a sort of uh, a session on this for um, municipalities. I think the mayor of New Rochelle was saying that, you know, people are quite attracted to the idea that the city of New Rochelle is, is adopting this and uh, he said it was like a almost like a marketing point for the city. Um, so one of the issues that comes up is people have is uh, what does it add to the cost of a building? Um, so NYSERDA has done some analysis of this. So for example, they said you might add 1500 to 2,500 to the cost of the construction of a single family home. But that would result in an almost 20% reduction in energy use compared to homes built on the existing code. And, uh, you know, the payback and the investment would probably be average around 6.4 years. So there is a, obviously a little bit more of an upfront cost but it doesn't take long to pay it back. And one of the other advantages they stressed was, you know, if, you, for, if you're building a place to rent out, then the, um, the renter is 
a primary beneficiary of this because they end up paying less in energy bills. So uh, that's uh, a good positive consideration to come from it. Um, okay, so has anyone got sort of any questions then? I guess. Uh, I, I guess my, my, my main concern, I mean, th this, this will help us with our rating, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it is, it is a, uh, when you say a rating for the Climate, climate Smart Communities community. Program? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it will. Yeah. You get points for that. And I think if you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Alan, if we adopt it by June, uh, we might be available. We might be eligible for a grant of five thousand dollars. Is that? Was, yes, that's what I recall. That that is correct. Um, that we would be eligible. Um, there's seventy eight of those grants remaining. So if we would act in time, we would be eligible for a five thousand dollar. It's called action grant. But then you know we we're sort of um, working two programs at once. I think everybody's aware that there's the clean energy communities. And then there's the climate smart communities, all with the same goal of having New York State meet its carbon reduction goals. Um, but if we pass this, we also um, get points in the climate smart communities. And I believe that would bring us up to um, sort of a 3,000 point threshold, which would give us a $10,000 grant in addition to this. Um, I, I just want to add on to what Liam said. Um, you know, first of all, I do think that we really need the buy in of the building department. I think that's, that's, key to the whole thing. But, you know, across Westchester, buildings account for um, one third of all carbon emissions. So, you know, a lot of what we've been doing is more residential based, but I think it's it's too big of a category to ignore. And as Liam said, these are, um, these codes, what's in these codes, things like insulation and um, using energy store, you know, equipment, things like that. These are things that will just, um, probably be required in a few years. So it really gives the building department more time to get used to the code and work with it. Um, so it's it's coming, <laughs> you know, it's just, this is getting sort of a, a jump start on it. And I will reiterate that the mayor of New Rochelle was all positive. Um, and obviously we know that that um, is a town, city, whatever, that does a lot of building. And he felt that it really made New Rochelle, you know, more attractive to mission-based investors, um, he felt that improved market values overall, and he didn't see, they weren't experiencing any obstacles with having this in place, and the town has it as well, so we could always consult with them. And I so think that the, builders the, that build, uh, one last point, that builders that build in the village versus the town, there's so much confusion that it would be, it just makes sense to have a consistent code across the village and the town. This, this also, this, this would apply to all new construction, but would it also uh, affect renovation? Yes, it would. Is there a threshold for renovation? I don't remember seeing that. Is there a what? Well, usually different codes uh, you know, get activated at a threshold of like, you know, you're spending so much in renovation, then you have to do this. Oh, 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 oh. It's not if you have to change, if you're changing a ceiling fan, you have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that answer, Tom. But, but yes, I'm sure there's some sort of threshold. We could find out for you. Okay. Dan Natchez? Uh, yeah, I'd like to hear from the building department. Uh, and their analysis of what the um, the real changes are. Uh, I'm all for you know uh, clean energy. I'm all for you know um, moving forward on these types of things. But concern that if somebody's doing a small renovation, to find out that they have to spend a significant more amount more for the rest of the house as opposed to what they are trying to do. Uh, I don't want that to be an impediment to improve homes. So I'd like to try and get a little better feel, you know, from the building department as to the nuances of this yeah. and what affects it, how it affects it. And, and I agree with Dan, but I also think that we should have a legal department take a look at this to make sure that uh, it, it would fit in nicely with our code or if they, you know, any problems that they may foresee. But I think it's something that we should move forward on after due diligence. Can we do due diligence in two weeks? I don't know. Sure. Let, let's let's see what we yeah. Let's let's come back to this in two weeks and see where we are. Bob, can you review this? We we Bob can review this. I've actually just while you're talking pulled up the adoption guide and pulled up with the town of Amarinick 
uh, did, and we can certainly review this. I just have two concerns. First of all, that to say that anything would fit in with the mishmash that is our building code is, is not something I'll ever say, because it, it won't without your taking a serious look at the whole code. Um, that's number one. My, my concern about this is that I don't know enough about the technical aspects of this, but I would just be concerned that maybe the building department could address this as Trustee Natchez has suggested. Just gotta make sure the building department has the capacity in terms of training and in terms of whatever equipment they need to be able to monitor uh, compliance. It's, it, just on a really quick look, it looks very technical. And um, uh, I'm not, it may require specific equipment and certainly more time and training to enforce this, just want to make sure they have the capacity to do this because the place we don't want to be is in a position where uh, you adopt the law and expect compliance. And then we can't say, the staff can't say we can enforce it. Fair enough. So let, let's uh, send this to the building department. I'm sorry, Nora, go ahead. Um, to, it's unclear to me about whether this is a this is a, a public hearing or just a resolution. It, it, no, this is definitely public the adoption of a local law, nor this is okay. a, a the, regular the, and seeker. There's some documentation that says it's just it, it's just by resolution, but it's a local law. Okay, yeah. that's my thought. Thanks. That's changing our code. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we'll have the building department take a look at it. Jerry, can you see to that, please? Yes. Of course. And uh, our crack legal team will investigate it and, and we'll be back in two weeks to see where we are with it. Back here or back on the re regular agenda? But we, we can't put on a regular agenda until we get an opinion from the building department and the. Uh... Right. So, um, to that end, I, I had suggested to the building department they contact. Um, the building department in Hastings on Hudson. Uh, you know, they'd obviously adopted it, but they've also done quite a bit of work sort of preparing a, um, a sort of work, worksheets for, for their um, inspectors to use to apply this. So I guess my point is that, you know, this has been adopted in a number of other places. So a lot of this work's been done. Um, <laughs> And also the other thing that I had suggested was that there was someone, uh, actually a contractor who works with NYSERDA, who would be willing to come and speak to the board of trustees. Mm -hmm. um, and I can facilitate that if you would be interested in having him come and he can obviously answer more specific questions. I what? believe to the point of you know, what is the workload required to enforce this? I believe that a lot of the energy sort of analysis stuff can be, can be done by sort of another party and not necessarily a sort of contractor too, but I'm, I'm not, it's a technical thing that I'm not necessarily aware of, but that would be something that I would suggest you look into. Um, and then to trustee Natchez's point, I'm actually putting an extension on my house. My architect got confused, thought I was in the town. So I applied the stretch code. So it only, so in, from my point of view, what, what's happened was he just said, okay, well, you need to buy more. We just need to buy these windows instead of these ones. So, you know, the, the, increased costs for that small extension was a few hundred dollars. So if you're talking about a renovation, I think you could think of it as sort of proportional. If you're doing a, you know, a renovation that is most of the house, then, then you're probably gonna get close to that $1,500 to $2,500 range that I said originally. And otherwise it, you know, it, in my case, it's a lot less. Okay. Thank you, Liam. So, Tom. Tom yeah. Uh, good for Liam. In the worksheets that you put, that have, there are a worksheet that compares 
the existing building state building code and you know uh, the improvements that would have to be made under this code, i.e., a comparison as opposed to just what they have to do to enforce it. Well, yeah, nice Serta, who sort of uh, the state agency running this, they have um, quite a lot of uh, documentation. I mean, it, it's it's very you know at some point it, it's very technical. Right, uh -huh. it's lighting, uh -huh. electrical energy monitoring, insulation values, and things like that. So, um, you know, that's something that the building department would probably okay. have to advise you on. No, what I, I mean, was I trying to get to. General sense is, you know, a lot of other municipalities have adopted this, and it, and their experience is it's reasonably seamless. Yeah, I, I'm appreciative of that. I was just hoping that if there was a worksheet that says instead of a R12, you need R or something like that, you know, that it was a quick comparison on the different issues, it would help speed up the review for the building department and definitely ease uh, trying to get uh, to implementation of this. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, now I said I have a complete adoption guide, right? Which I will, um, I'll send to the, to the, uh, the board. Um, I would suggest, suggest you send it to Jerry as the village manager and he'll distribute yeah. it to where it needs to go. Okay, I'll send it to Jerry. Thank you. Thanks, Liam. Uh, Thank and, you. For, so Thank just you. while we're talking about that, would you like the person from NYSERDA to address your meeting next? No, no not yet. Let, let's okay. just see what we get back from, Why not? because we, we, we already, we're going to have a report from the village manager and re a report from the building department. Well, we can all talk at once then. All right, then, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I think we keep moving along. Can I ask a question? Maybe it would be more beneficial for um, Jerry or someone else in the building department to talk to the person that Liam was talking about. I mean, they're gonna have more technical questions than we're gonna have. I, I think that that's a good point. What, what, Liam, what, why don't you have that person talk to Jerry and Jerry will get that person in touch with Frank. Is that okay, Jerry? Sure. Of course. Because that'll just be a rabbit hole. We'll, we'll talk together. I, when I'm up in the building department, Frank and I will talk to uh, the NYSERDA. You're talking about the person from NYSERDA, right? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sure. He's actually a, a contractor who works for, on behalf of NYSERDA. No problem. Yep. Okay. No, no issue. So I'll, when I send that information to you, Jerry, I'll uh, I'll include his contact. Very good. Thanks, Liam. Thank Thank you. We're going back to our regular agenda. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Oh, what? Thank you. The yeah, community solar program. They're on? Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, crap. Are we ready? On the agenda. The next item. Oh, sliced. Yep, sorry about that. Where is it? Uh, municipal, it's the next item, municipal electric generation and solar arrays. Okay, we, we, we and who's on? Uh, Committee for the Environment. Okay, municipal electric generation and solar arrays from the Committee for the Environment. Would you like somebody like to lead this? Well, this was um, this was um, my oh, initiative. Is it? Okay, it's not okay. okay. All, all right, right. Then, all right. Then. And, and and I did we did discuss it in the in the in the uh, the last environment commission meeting. Okay, then then it'll then it'll get called at a regular time. Okay, great. Okay, going back to the regular business. So that's not being discussed now. No, it's uh, not going to we'll, be discussed. Well, would you would you like us to? No, no, okay. because I, we got to get to the stuff that's going on here. Okay. okay. So I'm going to sign off. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. OK. Uh, item 1A, moving village elections to match federal election cycles. Uh, this was talked about by uh, the, the young members of the OPRA program. Uh, this would move all village elections uh, to the even numbered years, uh, which would match uh, the federal elections. Uh, this would provide for longer terms for the trustees 
I believe that they had the mayor run it every two years. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it would provide for greater voter turnout and uh, greater voter participation along a social, economic, and racially more diverse path. path. Uh, I know that uh, Trustee Young wanted to talk about this is his issue, so I'll let him. Move. Well, yeah, I, I, uh, since it seems like we can't do a <laughs> referendum uh, uh, because of the, uh, the quirks of the state law, this is something that we'll either have to decide to do uh, or not do ourselves. So um, uh, I, I, I strongly believe it simplifies uh, our election, the elections for our, um, our citizens. And uh, I, I have gotten very little negative feedback. Um, and uh, even today, I was talking to somebody who said, you have elections every year? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it makes sense you know, uh, to keep it simple for people. They, uh, they vote uh, on a number of things at the same time. And uh, and I would like to uh, uh, like to see you know where we stand on it and see if we can get three votes to do it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to at least bring to a public hearing because it would have to be mm -hmm. a public hearing to uh, make the change, and people can weigh it at a public hearing. Colleagues, I, you know, I've thought a lot about this. I, um, I've worked with the students on this quite a bit. Um, I, it, it really won't, it doesn't mean we won't have an election every year. It means the village of Mamaroneck won't have candidates running every year, but mm -hmm. we still have in, in, in the odd years or the off years, um, the, our, the, the respective towns, the town of Rye and the town of Mamaroneck and our county legislator and our county executive. And so the county executive runs every two years, county legislator every four years. So I am concerned that um, just on changing it, you know, there, this, is, this, is, this is a lot to unpack. And the proposal is moving to four-year terms for trustees, maybe a four-year term for the mayor, maybe not a four-year term for the mayor. Um, and also changing our election cycle from three trustees running on the even years and the mayor and one trustee running on the odd years to the mayor and one trustee running on an even year and three trustees running on an even year, but alternating cycles, so it's four year terms. Um, and so I'm concerned that we're disassociating ourselves with the county with whom we work closely. Um, and I would, you know, I, I think we have to, the county, I think the, up, the elected officials in the county rely on us to help get the vote out. So I think we have to think long and hard about whether we want to sever that connection. And um, wow. so I, you know, I think that's something we haven't, that, that we just haven't considered. I also, I think a referendum is really important. We, you know, we discussed this last year and decided not to do it. Um, I think if we're at all considering this, there need to be term limits. I mean, I think we, I think there's, there need to be term limits that maybe the, if we're going to do a four-year cycle, the four-year cycle should be on the off year, which I know doesn't have the same voter turnout. Um, we do get a bigger voter turnout in presidential years, and, and it's it's sort of ranked. Presidential year is the top. Um, then the congressional or, or gubernatorial year is next. Then we have the year the county executive runs, and then we have the year, which is the year that mayor and trustee run and then we have the year that only the county legislator runs and so there's really four different elections high high turnout in the even years less high turnout in the other years but they're not that disparate and um in 2020 we had a massive turnout we also had and i think this is like you know this i don't think the only way to increase voter turnout is by is by moving to an even year election but we had over 2,200 absentee ballots cast in Mamaroneck in 2020. And I think we had something like 648 in the previous presidential cycle. And that was because it was easy oh. to vote absentee. Everybody got a ballot in the mail, not, not you know, you didn't have to do the application process. Everybody got a ballot in the mail and you didn't have to be out of town that day or be disabled. So, I mean, I do think that there's many, many strategies for turning out the vote, and I'm not sure 
given our circumstance of running, of have, we're going to have an election in the village every year anyway. I mean, you know, we're going to need to vote. So it's not any easier for the voters. Um, we'll just have maybe lower turnout for the county and the town races. And I, you know, I, I don't know, I don't think we've considered that impact. So that, the, and I'm, I'm also still not convinced while personally it'd be much more convenient to run every four years no you know no doubt about it i'm not sure that um that that's a good idea because i think every two years makes us really more accountable to the voters and we're not running for our convenience we're running because we're here to serve the voters or the residents not necessarily the voters all the residents so i think there's a lot of there's a lot to discuss and I think right. Right. Anybody else? Okay. Dan? I think Dora has made some very valid points. So do we discuss that in the public hearing or are we just going to kill it here? Well, I, from I, we don't I don't know what the public hearing would be about. Is it about four year terms for everybody? Is it about four year terms for trustees and a two year term for mayor, which I'm not I don't quite understand that. It would be about, uh, it would be about changing it. What no, I mean, in order to have a public hearing, we actually have to draft a law. So we have to figure out what we want. Do we want to go to a four year cycle? Do we want to go to a a four-year cycle for the trustees and not for the mayor? Do we want to go to a four-year cycle on um, odd years where all the other local elections are held, where, you know, Rye, like, you know, up and down the road, it's it's the town of Ameranek, the village of Larchmont, the town of Ameranek, the city of Rye, and the town of Rye. So we're going to have, and, and the county. So the county board of elections is still going to be holding mm -hmm. elections in the village, and we're still going to need to come out to vote okay. for the town okay. and the county. What do you want to do? What do Firm limits. I mean, it's there's like a lot. It's not just hold on, hold on. What do you want to do? I mean, nor nor no, term limits isn't on the table here. I mean, that, that might Why be not? a very valid. Let, let me just finish, please. That might be a very valid uh, issue to put in, but that is not what we, we're discussing here tonight. That that would be a discussion for another time. Uh, you know, the idea that we need to stay in sync with the county. The county is talking about now moving to the even number of years. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, the county will take care of the county. And, you know, they, they, we had a county election last year where nobody ran uh, against our county legislator. And I'm happy about that for her. But it, it isn't like these, these are getting to be hotly contested elections. Uh, if we keep it every two years, we're solidifying the idea that there's always going to be low bird of turnout in the mayoral years, which you know is fine. But you know, but I'm not doing this for myself. I, you know, I I'm not going to be around forever. Uh, but I would prefer if the mayor ran every two years, two trustees ran every two years and four year cycles, so that every two years, there be like, like in the town. Every two years, the supervisor runs, and she runs or he runs with, with a, an array of different council members because they're running on four-year terms, but they're just doing it on the you know odd number of years. And you know, and, and I had served in the town and ran in the town on multiple occasions, you know, unopposed. Uh, and I don't think that that's particularly good. So there, there isn't a lot of activity outside of the village of Mamaronek in these off years that we really have to be worried about. And, you know, I, I, I don't know why our calculus has to be about the turnout for the county executive's race. I mean, that, that's a political calculation. That's not a governmental calculation. I mean, the, the, the idea here is, is that we're trying to bring out more voters to participate in our local process. And you know, that really is in some in substance, I think, what, what the, the youngsters uh, were pushing forward and you know, what is on the table here today. So, uh, well, I, I also do think that you know, term limits uh, have their place, possibly. You know, I, I think that also people in these office, offices should uh, have self-control and limit themselves and, and 
know when the uh, curtain's coming down. Uh, you know, I, I always like Mary Tyler Moore went out at number one. Uh, it's better to leave than to be kicked out. Uh, so, I mean, I, I just, you know, let, let's just focus on what this is. This, well, this is just about our elections and how it affects our voters here who, uh, you know, who, who vote for mayor and trustee. Well, I would say that um, while I think it's an interesting idea to have to, to do it in the rhythm that the town does it with two uh, trustees running every two years and one and the mayor running all of those I mean, sorry two trustees running, running every, every, four, every four years and the and and, and if we're going to if we're going to do it that way i'm not sure i mean the town supervisor has a different has a bit of a different role than the mayor does i'm not sure that you know four years is and i'm not sure a two-year term is required for the mayor i think it could be a four-year term but if we're in for a penny and for a pound but that's that that bifurcating of of, of switching out the races to like one year we have three trustees is how we do it now and then one trustee and the mayor, that's not on the table either. That's not one of the two proposals. So I'm not interested in expanding terms unless we couple it with term limits. And I think, you know, the students have given us some suggestions about what to do. They've given us two proposals. If we're limiting ourselves to those two proposals, then we are not in, we are not considering a, a, a situation where trustees run in pairs always with the mayor. But that's something that we, maybe we can do that. Though, that's right. something that we can do, and, and we can do know, term limits too. I mean, we could consider term limits at the same time too. Sure. Well, we, yeah. we, we we could we could make announcements that we're limiting ourselves too. I mean, you know, George Latimer did that. Well, uh, George Latimer, you know, but the, the law but, was changed. I don't know any small municipality that has term limits. Uh, you know, there's, there's the other argument too is that term limits are enforced by the voters. And you know, that it, if, if uh, you know, we, we had the two year term limits in uh, 1940, you know, we wouldn't have had Franklin Roosevelt during World War II. So, you know, <coughs> nature has a way of giving us what we need. Uh, so I, I I, 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 I'm, I'm just concerned about, you know, talking about an issue and then complicating it with another issue. And, you know, what, what do we, so I guess, Mary? Yeah, sure. I guess the question is, what do we want to do about this idea of syncing up our elections to the federal cycle? Do we like it or do we not? And do we want to consider it? And, and we can tinker with it all we want. That's that's the question here. Or do we like do do, do, uh, do some of us like it the way it is now? I, I'd like to change it. I would say that four of the members of the board a year ago decided not to do it. So it's I'm um, you know I'm interested in hearing people's evolution about why they've changed their mind. Well, I, I can tell you why I've changed my mind because I think that it's a it, it's the, the the kids brought back better research. Uh, I think that, you know, it, it's just an arduous task in the village of Mamaroneck to constantly have, uh, you know, this division every year. Uh, and it's just, you know, it, 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 it would still be, you know, plenty of democracy all around. There'd be more people participating. And the people who, who are now sitting it out are people who need the government most in a lot of ways, uh, people who are socioeconomically disadvantaged and people who are, you know, uh, racially diverse. They, they are the folks that we're not getting in the odd number of years. You know, they, they, and, and Nora, you and I have been doing this a long time and we have uh, tried to increase voter turnout uh, in these odd numbered years and we've only been successful at the margins, I, I can pretty much tell you, you know, how many people are going to come out and vote in this election and that election and be within a couple of hundred votes. And, well, and just just to like just to, to to clarify something also, in 2022, the amount of absentee ballots was because of COVID and 
the lessening of restrictions on how you can get an absentee ballot. That, they're not, they're not going to be 2,200 absentee ballots this year. Tom, I, I, what I said was, is because the New York State mailed an absentee ballot and made, New, New York State made absentee voting easier. Yeah, and because of COVID. It's because of COVID, but but they also changed the regulation so that you didn't have to say, you didn't have to swear that you were out of the county. And that referendum didn't pass last year. And that's really unfortunate. We could make one of the, you know, there are a lot of strategies to increase minority turnout. There, none of those strategies ever say take a year off from voting. So, um, you know, I, so I think that I'm, that, it's apples to or apples to apples, and I don't think that just I don't think that I don't think we can feel good about saying we've increased the turnout of underrepresented populations simply by moving elections to the years that more people vote. There's always, I mean, there's a dropout for you know from from there's a, always a drop down with the local races. So there's there when there's a higher turnout for the governor or for the president uh, than there ever is in our local races. There's a big turnout there. So I think there are a lot of other things we should be doing to increase you know, interest in, in elections and increasing local elections. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we um, adopt the concept of syncing up our elections with the federal cycle and we hash out the subsequent details of our elections uh, um, uh, as we discuss that. That's I'll my second. motion. I'll second the motion. All right, let's take a vote. Sally. Trust Sally. I'm, I'm here, sorry, Mayor. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? No. Lucas? No, I don't think it's that simple. I don't think it's that simple. It's no. The four? No. Yeah, Hi. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, village trustee liaison to village justice. Uh, Ludus was you too. All right. This this goes back to my January, uh, and, and Victor and I talked about it last a uh, couple of meetings ago, where I went down for the traditional "Hi, here's the courts," and I was like, sh I thought it was an Appalachia. I was shocked at the condition over there, and I thought we didn't know about it. Turns out we. We did know about it. Okay, I was though I didn't realize that. I, I thought they would need a liaison with the board to go over and just check on them and see how things are going. Um, they're a co-equal branch of government. They don't feel comfortable coming in and kind of uh, asking us for things. I don't think it's a bad idea that if uh, one of us uh, were designated a liaison to check in with them on a regular basis, maybe in a rotating, uh, uh, rotating schedule, that um, that uh, it would it would it would help with the communication a little bit, but um, that's my my idea. Uh, it doesn't have to. Uh, it's a little less urgent than I than I thought it was, since apparently we were aware of the mess across the street, and uh, uh, and uh, I didn't realize we were. All right, so that's that's what that is. Okay, we we just to 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 clarify. Mm -hmm. We we voted recently. Uh, on, on uh, no, I mean Jerry. Jerry made took emergency action. Yes. And no, just for, for just for public. Okay. Uh, to to rectify a lot of the building deficiencies uh, that have were apparent and some that weren't apparent, and uh, we are currently working upon that. Uh, and hopefully, the work conditions over there will become tolerable uh and uh it, it's it's a shame that that has gone on for i don't know i i would say that's that building has been deteriorating for 50 years without getting the proper attention and uh we are the board that it fell upon to uh then do the work necessary to uh improve the building condition just just for folks at home old village hall we're talking about this is on mount pleasant and prospect right over here uh, next uh, across the street from the parking area where the police department is and where the court is. It's called Old Village Hall. Um, that was not designed as a village hall. It was not built as a village hall. Uh, it was built as uh, St. Michael's home for uh, wayward girls. Uh, 
back in the day. Um, and we have been repurposing uh, that building to try and make it something it was never intended to be. We have a police station there. Uh, we have a court that's been added on there. Uh, we have our building department there. Uh, we have our detective bureau there. We have an inadequate uh, jail there. Uh, so we, we, we are trying to uh, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, as they used to say. But we're working on it, and hopefully it'll be better for the community in the uh, coming months. I just want to bring the community up to date on that. I, 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 uh, to the point of, uh, of this, the, what we were talking about, does the board feel a liaison with uh, our two justices would be in order? I, I, for me personally, I, I'd be afraid of you know one branch of government bleeding into the other. Uh, I, I, I think that they are you know pretty vocal about what they need and what they want. So I, I, I personally would not be in favor. Of it. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Tom, I agree. I think they're their own branch and that it wouldn't really be appropriate. It's not like a board or committee where we need, where they need someone to bring things back. If they need something, they really can get in touch with Jerry or us directly and they do. I, I, underst I understand that. I, I uh, my feeling was that, um, that they, uh, we control their purse strings, their their budget. So we, we, we might want to know what the condition of their you know their, their working conditions, which were horrible. I didn't realize we were aware that they had horrible working conditions already. So that that's that's uh, that's something I learned. Okay. Subsequently. But thank you for caring about them and taking yeah. action. I appreciate it. Uh, item one C: Enforcement of multiple dwelling law. Jerry, you know what? I think we talked about yeah. this last meeting. We're going to try and. Yeah. Get an update by the by the uh, second meeting. April. That's right. Next time, just put that next to it. Okay. okay. Rental registration program. Um, Mayor, I had a meeting earlier with the um, with the village attorneys, and um, earlier, I'm sorry, late last week, and they need a little bit more time to do their review and go over it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just to be clear on that. Uh, an email to uh, everybody, but directed to the attorney uh, regarding the existing code. Uh, and I'm still waiting for an answer on that. And I'd like that at the same time. We're working on that. That's what they're working on. Thank you. Uh, item 2E, uh, zoning strategies to support all affordable housing development comprehensive plan. 1E, that's 1E. Oh, 1E, I'm sorry, my, my mistake. And uh, Neil Vasai. Neil Vasai, do you, you, you want to lead us in that, Dan? No, I will promote that. Neil is on? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's an attendee. Yeah, I just promoted him to a panelist. <clears throat> so he should be joining us shortly. Oh, is that on? Okay. Great. When Neil's he, not on, we'll get back. No, he is. He's, he's, he's there. Promoting. Yes, I'm here. Oh, hi, Neil. Hi. Hello, everybody. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing. Uh, cold. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I went through the, the comp plan, which was in, in 2020. The, the latest version of the comp plan is, is the third draft, and I have this attached to the memo I sent, and that was November 2nd, 2020. And we were almost there. We're almost to the, to the end zone with, with this. Um, uh, I think all that would, I think the one thing that we needed to do was, uh, as the first part of the memo, as number on the first page of the memo, item number three there, where we left off and where we are now, um, you know, we put this in hold due to COVID, um, the draft was never made public, but it does incorporate, uh, the comments by the BOT, land use boards, committees, and, um, in the, uh, attachment, the, 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 this third draft, of the full plan uh, in red text typeface when you're going, if you're going through that in, in red typefaces, everything that's been 
modified based on, on, on all those comments. Uh, now there is also a table that goes along with that. Um, and that's what I've, I've done for the previous two drafts was, or previous drafts was to have a table uh, that uh, um, shows you the page number and who made, you know, who made the comment and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, we kept, kept close uh, track of all the comments, but, uh, but here we are now, I, th I think I was, I was uh, at the last, uh, the last uh, work session we had, uh, Sarah Brown and I were both here and um, we were uh, uh, glad to see you wanted to continue the comprehensive plan update process. And I think the, the one thing I wanna uh, preface about the comp plan is um, my approach to comp plans is, well, they are comprehensive. They do incorporate a lot of aspects of, of, um, uh, of, of town, a lot of the things we just heard about, about uh, uh, the building, the stretch code, and, and these are all aspects that, um, you know, are, 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 would be covered in the comprehensive plan. But at the same time, I, uh, I, I try to balance the comprehensive plan from being too much of a, a compendium of, of, of facts uh, with the need to be, provide strategy for the next five years. Um, so uh, when I went through each chapter, um, I kind of, you know, I took that viewpoint. I, I you know, I do want to be, I do want to make sure that the content of the plan is accurate in terms of reflecting what's happened. And I know a lot of things have happened since 2020. Uh, actions have been taken by the committees even during COVID. And of course, um, beyond COVID, there was, there's Hurricane Ida. And so for each chapter um, in, in my memo, I just kind of provide a summary of what I believe needs to be updated uh, within each of those. As far as the, the second chapter, which is really the, the summary of the, the public engagement we had so far, um, there is some public engagement things, just basic updating people on the process, communicating what the next steps are, or any other topics. And you know, I make a few suggestions for how uh, you know, we could involve uh, general public um, in this in in, uh, in in this kind of next next phase of completing this update, uh, and that's something I I want to uh, hear from you about uh, those some of those ideas, and but for each chapter I provided just a brief uh, summary of just the things I believe need to be need to be updated, and uh, I think of course one of the things is in the uh, land use and development chapter. Um, you know, I think that's where the tie-in is with uh, uh, zoning strategies for affordable housing. And so certainly that's an important element we'd want to um, include in that chapter. And um, so we provided a, a budget and a timeline for that in the memo. Uh, we estimate it could take about probably a minimum of four months to update the draft, uh, uh, followed by two months for the review process, um, public adoption. And with respect to the zoning strategy of affordable housing, um, you know, I, I put a note in here saying before we, you know, it, it took a little bit of time to kind of digest all the things we've been done um, uh, since 2017 on this project. And so um, I, I did want to get a chance to, uh, I think the, the, to hear a little bit more BOT about their thinking on zoning strategies and, and the specifics of it. Uh, before I provide a, a more detailed proposal like I did with the comprehensive plan update. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I think you've, most of you are all familiar with, with, with uh, the document. The third draft is something you might not have seen ever, uh, but it uh, represents the update of the, the, of the second draft, which was June, June 6, 2020, which you all reviewed. And I think, um, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's my, 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 uh, a summary of, of, of the memo. Um, and there is another memo in there from my NB5 days, which provides some background because in 2017, uh, it's, I wanted to mention that, uh, you know, the, the emphasis of the, of the plan was to be on um, uh, looking at sustainability and residential neighborhood character. And so you'll see that in the current draft, there's a lot of attention on, in, in, the, in those two sections. But uh, I think one important thing is given COVID and Hurricane Ida, um, how much have, you know, how, how do the priorities shift a bit in how the comp comprehensive plan has taken shape so far? 
So, um, okay. so yeah, happy to discuss. Any questions from the board about Mr. Desai's? Terrific uh, report. Okay. I think we're so close. I, I really, I, I think we should, you know, I think we need to finish the comp plan. And um, I'm wondering if two items down, the moratorium for C1 and C2 is something that would fold in neatly into the comp plan. Just, I mean, it's, it's, it's. Well, let's take one item at a time. Because I want to talk about that separately. Is everybody okay for putting this on in two weeks? Well, I do have a question for Neil. I actually think we were even closer. I'm hmm. surprised to see how probably you think how far, because we were even at the point of implementation, we were already reading how to do it. Uh, we had already received input for where we were. I know we, we reopen things and just by updating it, it will require the, the round of, of uh, you know, putting things up to date in various ways. Um, and also of course, public input. But I thought, uh, is, is, isn't there, Opening up things that we already had closed, I, I think, couldn't you review that on that end? I, I was, I think it would be too lengthy now. It would be too much of to get into the weeds, but I, I was a little surprised to see kind of, uh, kind of the, the bulk of work and, 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 and to be honest, the, the cost, I thought it was gonna be a piece of that. So, so uh, uh, maybe there is, Maybe, but, that, but that's my sense of where we were. I think we were really, really close. I was expecting something more focused, but uh, you know that, that that's really my comment. I, otherwise, I would have to get too, too much in the weeds, and I want to either negotiate or, of course, uh, uh, Neil, my role. Neil, can you address those? Any concerns? comment on that? Neil, can well, you address those? Concerns? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, in my in the back of my mind when I was doing this, you know, I was I I thought I I thought that might be a comment that might come up, and that's a, absolutely it's a legitimate comment. Um, that you make, uh, you know, can this can this thing? You know, we've gone so far in this process. Do you think? Do you think that we can, you know, really kind of hone in and focus it and and make it, you know, make it kind of simpler and more compact? Uh, and, and you know, and that would mean a, a lower budget. Um, I think. Uh, I mean, you know, when I was looking at all aspects of the chapter, I think that, you know, there's a lot of. Um, uh, I mean, I think. It, it's there's if you start going through each section of the thing you'll see things that the way we talked about things about covid in the beginning you know there's a lot that needs to be changed because covid has happened i think at the when it, when when this was written in 2020 we're in the thick of things and still trying to figure things out um whether it's how would businesses operate and so there's a you know starting with even just the beginning chapters there's a lot of language in there that uh would be um, at this point, it would be, it's not obsolete, but it's, 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 it, it needs to be kind of a broad a step forward. And I think in each chapter, um, you know, I, I try to stay in touch with, with, with what, what things have been happening in Marinec, um, you know, by looking at the agendas, just so I can, you know, have my pulse on what's happening. And um, there's a, you know, there's the, there's some, I think there's a, a wetlands law update, there's buffers, there's, I think there was a politician who who, who suggested American wanted to see Mermaranek Avenue in downtown have some sort of bike lane treatment between that sort of thing, and uh, I think there's a lot of significant change that has ha that has happened. But this is just from my eyes that uh, you know we'd want the comp it would it would reflect in the comprehensive plan. It would it would need to be reflected in the comprehensive plan more. Actually, to finish, because maybe others want to follow on this topic, that's really my concern, that I think you're opening up too many issues. We mm -hmm. had so many updates and improvements over a plan that is 10 years old and right. actually started in 08. So mm -hmm. it's almost, it's really, and by opening so much, this six months is going to turn into, into another year or two. And I, 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 I think that's really where we have to narrow it and scope it down because all these le le issues are legit. And the more we talk and the, they're all interesting, they're about, but we really have done 90 something as, as, the, as, as the, even the, the paying of the other consultant firm shows, 
99% of that work. So it all depends on how much we open it, open up here. And then there could be opportunities to do other processes as some have been mentioned, even on affordable housing, but, but narrow it so we can finish this now. That's, that's right. really my concern. I, and I leave it to others. I would like to favor looking at a revised narrower scope. Uh, I'll just want to add, I, I, I see, I think, I think um, uh, I see what you're saying, Victor, and I, I would, uh, I think I can certainly do that. I think, I think, I think you're right in that respect that, you know, there's enough in there that we can move along with things that we want to do um, next, particularly with the housing. Um, and maybe since, you know, maybe we accept certain parts of it as, you know, for example, in the sustainability section, I'm sure the you know, I think you started doing residential composting pickup, which I think is one of the recommendations uh, in, in the plan. And we can just be like, well, that's been implemented and just accept the fact that, you know, uh, and not accepting it, but like, you know, in a way you can, you know, we it's it's reflected in the compound plan and it has been implemented. And so in, from that respect, you know, the comp plan is not necessarily outdated. It's just, you know, actions have been taken on some of these recommendations that have already been implemented. And so, you know, do you need to spend time, you know, uh, uh, going through this entire proposal and opening it up? And I, I do see the, the four month, I said at a minimum it would take, and I could, I could imagine if, depending on how we played out, it could go longer uh, if we, if we so-called open it up as, as Victor uh, has said. Anybody else? So, Neil, what do you think can be done in the way of narrowing it and moving it faster? Is that is that a reasonable thing? Is it really just not necessarily going through the discussions, but more to the recommendations in the recording? You know, you know, it's uh, in you know in in, the, in that end of it. Um, I think. Um, I think it's. Um, I think I'd want to hone in more on the affordable housing section, um, the, the, which is in the land use and development chapter. Um, if we, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of what, is there content in the comprehensive plan that is not there or that needs to be uh, fleshed out in order for the village to do certain important things that it needs to move forward with? And so I think there could be some more I think maybe emphasizing, I think maybe focusing in on some of the chapters, mm -hmm. um, maybe, you know, look at two or three of the chapters, certainly land use and development, which would be where affordable housing would go. Um, and I think, uh, I think, I think that's the one key chapter I think we need to focus on. I think, um, I, I think, I think that approach might work if we, we kind of hone in, um, hone in on maybe two or three chapters that are really important to focus on to move to to update and to kind of put in any from a recommendations perspective and then move from that. And it, would it would it be reasonable to ask you to try and come back with a um, you know a, a more refined uh, proposal and see where we go from there? Yeah, I think and I think the one thing I'd want is I want to I think my initial thinking is land use and development um residential okay. neighborhoods and yeah, i'm not the, i'm not sure we can decide that tonight i think that's okay. what we're asking you to do is sure. we want to do it on the fly and i i want you know you're a very thoughtful and uh, an insightful person who does this as a professional um, and i think the question is is there a way of honing in on things very quickly and moving it forward on a bit on a faster track without getting into the weeds Right. So, uh, right. To quote you, but getting into more of the, um, uh, you know, if there, if we need to tweak some of the substantive things, whether it's land use or other things, uh, let's. You know, I'd like to see a proposal from you to do that in a Neil, uh, the shorter timetable. Neil, can can you come back to us in two weeks? Uh, you can leave this proposal on the table. Give us a truncated proposal in two weeks and come back, and we can talk about it again. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. All right. Take care. Thank you, Neil. We'll Thank see you in two weeks. All right. Bye-bye. Uh,
one F, we're going to wait till April 11th, and the uh, share of CZM is going to come. Wait till what? April 11th. That's our next meeting. Um, in deference to that, can we start that as number one? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, I'll do what I always do. When somebody comes that's a volunteer, I put them on top of the list. Okay, well, I'm just, okay. Uh, unless I don't see them and I don't know, but if I know, I do that. Uh, transfer station roof project, we're waiting. Jerry, what are we waiting on for that? We're waiting to do it in-house, but I just haven't had time to do it. You do the whole project in-house? Yep, whole project. Um, what kind of, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what kind of roof is that, Jerry? It's a typical pole barn type of structure, Lou. W would it support solar panels? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure about the rating. I don't know if it will. I can I can check to see if it, it would, but it's basically that, that a simple would, I, pole barn. I, I'm hopeful that's something we can start doing on a regular basis. Uh huh. I agree. I think the solar array is the way to go. Pardon me. <clears throat> Item 1H a development moratorium for properties in the C1 and C2 zoning districts that are located in a federally mapped floodplain. Uh, I sent this a long time ago. And uh, something I want the board to consider. I was like, yeah. uh, I'll just read what I wrote. Dear all, this was to everybody. Uh, development in the flood zone is a topic of great concern to many folks who live in the village for obvious reasons. The only real opportunities left to de develop substantial housing in the flood zone are in the C1 or C2 commercial districts with the infill housing provision of our zoning codes. Eliminating infill housing in the flood zone, which are easily identifiable, would keep the population that is threatened by flooding from growing, lessening the burden on village emergency services and hopefully easing traffic congestion and strain upon already stressed infrastructure in our most densely populated areas. I'm proposing a moratorium on any new applications in this area for housing until we can study the issue and decide whether to amend the law accordingly. I want to discuss, I want the discussion to center on this one issue and not run far afield like the discussions of PLLC a few years back, which became overly complicated and had unintended consequences. In addition, a discussion of a moratorium on infill housing in the C1, in the flood zones in C1 and C2 district, to the next, I'm adding this in addition. Uh, hopefully we can work with bigger on this issue. Uh, just for folks who uh, are not up to date on our code that much, and, and why would you be? If you're watching from home, uh, the C1 and the C2 are the commercial districts. Uh, the C2 is mostly here on the Marinick Avenue and a little bit up the road a bit. Uh, in Washingtonville, I believe, all of the commercial district that is abutting uh, uh, Marinick Avenue is zoned C1 or C2. Uh, a lot of that has been developed residential already, but there is a lot that has not been developed residential. Now, there are a couple of things. Every time we build a residential building, we're taking away opportunities for regular commercial businesses to have access to our downtown. And in my view, we are putting people in harm's way. And although we have the Army Corps plan coming up, you know, there is always going to be, you know, a, a, a potential for flooding in those areas. And uh, what we've done over the years is fit more people into an area that we know is going to flood. And we, we built uh, both all our affordable opportunities down there. And we have built more high end opportunities down there. Now, I, I think that adding more people into an area uh, that is dangerous to begin with is not good planning. Uh, 
we have a couple of projects underway now in consideration uh, by the land use boards. I'm not talking about affecting them because I, I don't believe in having somebody get 80, 90 percent down the road and then pulling a rug out from under them. I just don't think that's fair. Uh, but this would be a moratorium on developing any more in those flood zones until we have a chance to consider changing the law. Uh, at the end of the day, we might change our minds and think that 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 isn't the way to go to change the law. But the moratorium would allow us the chance to take our time, consider what is best for the flood zone, and whether or not we wish to allow more residential development in an area uh, that's actually zoned commercial and not residential. The whole idea of infill housing was to take part to take parts of uh, uh, land that were not even, that were you know oddly shaped, that were zoned commercial, and to give those people some other uh, opportunity to use their land. What it has become almost exclusively is a way to create more housing. And, and that wasn't the sole purpose of it. The purpose of it was you know, to, to, to have the opportunity, but not have it to be the only opportunity. Uh, and, and that's what's happened in the past 40 years since infill housing was allowed in the village of America. In, in a lot of communities, you can't build housing in a commercial zone. It's commercial. We've allowed it uh, in, in some ways successfully. Uh, and in some ways, I think we, we overused it. Uh, and after September 1st, you know, the, the idea of uh, increasing uh, density in an area that, quite frankly, we could not provide emergency services to during the height of the storm. Uh, one of the, the most uh, stressful parts about being mayor in these past four years was when people were calling me on the night of September 1st and saying, you know, I'm stuck on my second floor. Uh, my whole first floor is inundated. Uh, when are you coming to get me? And having to tell them that we don't have the capacity to come to get you. And that, you know, just keep going up higher in your house and, you know, we'll, we'll get you as soon as we can get you. And, you know, then uh, truly praying that they would be there in the morning. And thankfully they all were. But it was a, it was a stressful night. And uh, I just, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to put more of our residents in that situation. Uh, we, we, we've built in areas where we can't, a whole significant part of this community, we can't provide emergency services to uh, during a, a large flood event. And that, that is very scary. Uh, so that, that, that was my thinking on this. I would like uh, to have the village attorney draft the moratorium law if the, I have support from the board. But I, I think this is a very important issue. We obviously don't have to have the answers to what the moratorium study would be. But uh, I, I, I want to give us a breather so that we can study this issue uh, without... Uh, a rush by developers to build up on all the land before uh, we've had a chance to uh, examine what's best for our community. So that was a mouthful, and I'm sorry it took so long. But that's how I feel on this. You know, I, I, I don't disagree. And I, I also, you know, the planning board had asked for this in September as well. But um, I think you know, one of the problems with the, uh, the previous moratorium was we didn't have a good scope. So I think we have to be very fast at figuring out what our scope is going to be because we don't want to have to keep extending and extending. And obviously well, it can apply to people who are already in the process. That's not legal. I mean, it's not the right thing to do, but it's also not defensible. Well, it, it's legal until they get a building permit. You no, can no, do what, no you're, I'm talking about your reference that it wouldn't apply to people. Well, I think if they're in the process, you really can't stop them from no. applying for their permit. 
No, you can, but if you have a moratorium, they can't get a permit. Mr. Spolzino? Do you want me to answer that in a public session? Yeah. The, the yeah. answer is you can stop them until they get to the point of substantial construction, at which point they have a vested right to continue under whatever approval they're operating under. Okay, I did not know that. My, Lou? Um, a moratorium doesn't sit well with me. And, and the reason it, it does it is because it's, it, it, seems, it seems like um, paralysis. It seems like we don't know what to do, so we don't want to do anything because we're afraid to do anything. And um, and I, I'm familiar with the area there. I think that area, parts of that 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 commercial zone have changed and are are de facto residential now already. And some of those abandoned former uh, uh, build, co commercial buildings are just sitting there contributing to the flood problem. So uh, if, if if a developer wanted to knock them down. And build something that's more flood resilient and less uh, and less of problematic in, in, in causing runoff. Then, then why wouldn't we let them do that? Why do we insist on having abandoned buildings just sitting there, uh, occupying space? I mean, if, if somebody wants to 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 deal with those some of those buildings on Van Rens, for instance, well, God bless them. Let, let's let let them do it. I mean, uh, that's where I live, uh, and and I don't like looking at abandoned buildings and and. Uh, and I understand if it floods, the ambulance isn't coming to get me, but those buildings will be high enough not to get, not to get flooded. So I, I don't like it, Tom. I don't. Okay. We're allowed to disagree. But it, my, my, my concern is without a moratorium, people are going to rush to build uh, if they know we're considering it. But that, that, <laughs> I wish they would. <laughs> no, that, yeah. we, 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 we disagree on this. Okay. Uh, is there support for asking a village attorney to draw up a moratorium law? So, Bob, how would, you know, is six months enough time? I mean, obviously. Just, let, let, let me just address something Nora said before, because I got off track. My, the study, which I would want to see is just removing infill housing in the C1 and C2 zone in areas that are in the flood zone. That is the scope that I would consider. It's a, it's a narrow scope. So I, I think a narrow scope is a good way to define it. Um, and I also think that if you're going to do a moratorium or make any kind of a land use change, it's always better to have it be part of your comprehensive plan. And as we're wrapping up the comprehensive plan now, that's why I wanted to, to that's why I think we would link those two together because it's, you know, we're using the moratorium as a planning tool for how we deal with the areas or for, for not how, for one aspect of how we deal with the areas that flood. So I think because we're finishing up the comp plan and because we have a consultant that we've worked with on a moratorium for, so, you know, I think we'd all work together pretty quickly um, and efficiently. I think that that will make sure that the the moratorium fits in with the, the community's goals. I think it's a I think it's like it's great that both of them are on the agenda the same day. Okay, but my, my question is, are you supportive of the village attorney drawing up a moratorium law? Yeah, I mean, yeah, provided that we you know work. I mean, we have to get a consultant to 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 do the. Of course, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, but provided I, we like link it to our comp plan, I think it's okay. a really good idea. Not, okay. not in the vacuum, is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I, 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 I like that. Dan, Victor had his hand up. We'll get to you. Go ahead, Victor. I I follow uh, Lee uh, Lou's idea that there could be things we could we could be doing now. And there, there are, we invite the, the, the uh, planning board that is dealing with these issues to tell us what quick change they need to make to tackle some of these changes. Maybe we don't need a moratorium. Maybe, maybe the answers are right there and we could tackle them. So I, I, would, I would go along that, that the moratorium 
which I'm also afraid if it doesn't have a very, very specific proposal, because it, I, I'm a little confused because, and it's not a question because we don't want to invite to the dialogue, but, but on the one hand, the mayor is saying, we need to do this to study. And then you say to do this in this area, but in the middle, there, there's a million of possibility. We have to be very, very narrow. And I, I don't see that happening now. So I, I'm not in, in favor of, of just drafting a law because then we'll have to scope it. He, I, I don't think how, how, how we could kind of rush into that. I'm, I'm more in line with what Lou and, and Nora has just said without well, drafting Nora's a law. in favor of the moratorium. Okay, well, then I wrap it up saying no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, Natchez? Yeah, uh, Nora, I'm just, I'm curious. I don't understand how you we can do a moratorium, which will go on for, you know, six months and also have it in, included in the comprehensive plan unless we do, you know, delay the comprehensive plan. So, and I, that, that's the oxymoron that I'm struggling with. Well, in suggesting. I think, so I, I think if we're going to have a moratorium, as we know, last time we didn't give ourselves enough time, we had to extend it. We almost had to, I think, did we extend it twice? I think we did extend it twice. Like I had to do an extra month at the end um, because we didn't have a scope. This is a pretty narrow scope. I think we can get that portion of it done. Um, and if, you know, we want it, we don't want the moratorium, we don't want the comp plan to go on for more than, you know, we, I mean, Neil said four months minimum if we we're going to do the larger scope. We're reducing the scope of the comp plan. So if we can get the comp plan done, we can get this done as part of the comprehensive plan. I mean, we have to do a planning study anyway to do this. Then um, we might find we might be able to solve the solution faster. I understand the planning board's request that we kind of, you know, hold on and don't let people start applying until we've figured no. this out. And I understand. Tom's interest in doing that. And, you know, Ida was now, what, six, seven months ago, and we haven't, and we haven't changed anything on the ground. So yes, I, I just, thank you, Nora, and I agree with you. I, I just want to be clear about something. The scope that I'm talking about is very narrow and very defined, and it's right there. It's removing the infill housing provision in the flood zone, in the C1 and see what C2 district, if there, if there is flood zones in the C2 district. And that is it, th th that is the scope that I hope to study. And if the study comes out that that would be, would be a foolish idea, then I'll accept that. But that is the scope of the study. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want this to, to, I mean, this is what happened with PLLC, we, 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 we we, we didn't think narrowly and it, it became a little more complicated. Uh, so I just want to be clear about that, that, you know, that would be the scope and, you know, the planning board asked for a moratorium, uh, the flood committee asked for a moratorium. Uh, you know, I was skeptical at first, but then the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to me. Victor, I saw your hand up. Yes, Mayor, I, I, I think what I understand from what you're explaining is you're more like rezoning. You know what you want, and then you want to study it. But you're really moving us into a rezoning. You want to already rezone, eliminate the infill housing from this area. That's that's changing the code. I understand that, Victor. So I then totally why do you need a moratorium? So code. what you're suggesting is something different. No, no Victor, I, I don't understand what, what the confusion is. That you already have the conclusion where you would no, want to end. I, that, that's the premise I want to investigate it. If the investigation turns out that my premise is wrong, then I'm willing to abandon my premise. But all of these moratoriums happen with the premise. They, they, they happen with, hey, there's a problem. How do you propose on addressing the problem? That's my proposal, right? If my proposal turns out to be wrong, I'm willing to admit that I was wrong. But you know, it, it, it's, it's the, the moratorium protects us while we do the study. And that, that, but but this is like, you know, proving a theorem, right? Somebody comes up with a theorem and then they, they work out the proof and sometimes that proof doesn't work out and you gotta go back to the drawing board. I, I'm more than willing to, you know, work on the theory and if it doesn't work out to say it doesn't work out. But I think that 
the the goal of not putting people in harm's way and of uh, you know moving this village to be more resilient is the goal I'm looking for. Trustee Natchez, you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, what would you envision being studied? Of, uh, you know, we hire somebody. What what would you envision their scope to be? Not just studying, but specifically, what what would we be looking for? What I believe they would specifically be looking for are the benefits and the detriments to the community of removing infill housing in a flood zone. That would be it. How would it benefit the community? How would it hurt the community? Would the benefits outweigh the detriments? I think that that's basically the the the, uh, the, the goal of every study. This is a rocket science. Well, it, it seems to me the answer to that depends on what's there now. I mean, um, uh, I, I worked out here, uh, you wanna build something? If it helps, yes. If it doesn't help, no. Now, if it's an empty lot, I think we leave it alone until we figured uh, uh, out, out our new uh, zo uh, zoning, zoning laws and all that. But if it's an abandoned building and you're gonna tear it down, well, yeah, let them do that. But, but, but Lou, you can't differentiate when, you, when, you know, when you're doing zoning. You can't say, okay, I'm gonna not let I'm gonna not let uh, Mr. Jones build because he has an empty lot, and and I'm gonna let Mr. Smith build because he has old buildings. When when you're trying to do zonings, you have to look at the whole zone in, in its entirety and see what benefits the community. Trustee Natchez, I don't have an objection to the attorney drafting a proposed moratorium, but I would want to see a proposal from a consultant before adopting it. So, you know, what, just, you know, of what would be studied so that we can determine whether this makes sense or not, Tom. Let me just finish, Tom. I am talking I would appreciate the courtesy of just being able okay, to- Okay, okay. I just want a clarification of something you said. Okay, what, what I'm looking for is, just said, saying we're gonna study it, I would like to see a very specific proposal from somebody who would undertake the study as to what they think they can do and what they can't do. Okay, that's better, that's better. That, that I understand better. Okay, Your, so that, and that's what oh, I'm, I'm trying to get to. So I don't- have I, to but, but I want them coupled together. So when it comes before us, we have what, what the moratorium mm -hmm. and what would be done in a timetable so that we have something more solid to proceed on. That, that's not a bad point. Is Neil on? Yes, that, that's okay. why, I, yeah, Neil's on the call. And I think, so I think if we had, you know, been continuing, uh -huh. If we hadn't stopped our comp plan or we had resumed shortly after Ida, some of these issues would have been resolved in the work Neil would be doing. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I think we're, you know, it's, I think everybody's on the same page and we just need to figure out what the studies are. And I think. Okay. If we hadn't done all the work we did on the previous moratorium, we wouldn't really remember the history of the infill housing and you know why it was introduced and you know its legacy hasn't been great for the village. So I think we're on the right path to fixing that. Okay. Thanks. Neil? I'm glad Neil's back. Neil, are you on? Yeah. No, I, I remember that you were going to talk about the moratorium, so I hopped back on. Okay. Um, uh, and. So I, yeah, I just have mine goes mine. My question goes along with with uh, Trustee Natchez's question or, or or suggestion to focus in because the you know having done the moratorium study, the prior one we covered a lot of ground, traffic, and yeah. we covered a lot of aspects of things. And I guess uh, it sounds to me possibly, um, and uh, you know you would need uh, you know is the one is the one thing you want to look at. Uh, like, for example, you know, Beacon did a moratorium a few years ago, and they focused on one thing. Their concern was water supply. So they did a, uh, they did a study on, on water supply and whether the development, new, new development can handle 
uh, can is going to uh, have a negative effect on water supply or, or if there's enough water and they that was the very specific scope. Uh, I think the study was probably quite large, but it was a very specific scope. Now, in this case, is it like, is it some sort of hydro, you know, kind of looking at flood modeling? Like, what is the likelihood of floods in some of these areas and whether uh, that would put... We, 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 we know the likelihood of floods. You know, okay, we, well. you know we, it, 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 it's, it's, that, that's not what I'm after. Uh, yeah, and you, you can refer to the Army Corps of Engineers study for that information. Uh, what I'm talking about is what with the action of removing the infill housing from flood zones in the commercial district, C1 and C2. Uh, you, I'm sure you're aware of the infill housing provision that we have. Definitely. Uh, what would be the detriments and what would be the benefits and you know, would it be, you know, would it be worth all while, uh, both from a, a public safety standpoint, uh, what would be the trade off in uh, losing those properties as infill housing? Does that make sense, Neil? Yeah, so it sounds like, so, so one of the factors for sure, for example, losing properties in the infill, one could look at, you know, what is, you know, what is the impact on, um, you know, tax, tax revenue, or what is the impact on well, potential affordable housing, revenue, right? Because, potential, right. Yeah. Okay. And the costs associated with having housing. Got it. Which would be pub, or I see pub, potential public safety costs of uh, that sort of thing, or or even just having housing and having to provide uh, more municipal services for more residents. Got it. And some of that, because this area was part of the moratorium area, all the area was part of the moratorium area, so there is going to be data from that already. Yes. Yeah, we have a lot of data uh, from 2019 or 2018. Uh, we looked at parcel by parcel, um, what are the potential build outs? And I wonder if uh, use it, that, you know, that data we could, could be re reused or need to you be know, updated. I, I, I hate to be a stickler for time, but we have other things that we have to jump off of at 645. Uh, do, do we have a consensus to have Neil give us a, 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 a proposal on this and to have Bob uh, write up uh, a, a potential uh, moratorium so we could look at that. I think we had three people who agreed to that. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to do that. Uh, consider them. The, the okay, new, thanks. All right. So I, I, at, at the no, same I'm time, to, I'm, I'm at, at the same time, is that, yeah, the, same the time. first scope before we, we give it to the, board, the, the same board, time. If, if they want to move this, because I'm really reluctant because really the other, without a very, a very clear uh, built-in system to restrict extending this to very, very focused, I'm very reluctant to do this. So how, okay. how I really question, how can you move the two things at the same time uh, without, because one of the things, and Bob can confirm is, you really have to, you really have to justify, you have to explain why you're doing it and, and have a time, time, I, I, it, that relates to what you're studying. So I think you, you, you're I, heading ahead of, without heading, but you don't let me finish. Without getting the piece from, 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 from Mr. Desai, I don't know how you can move to the second at the same time. Well, we, we could have the, the law ready and we could decide as a board whether to move it in two weeks. It'll be just be on the agenda. And you can make these arguments again in two weeks, but if, if the majority of the board wants to do it, then we can do it. We're not making a decision to put it on a regular session. This is for the work session in two weeks. And, and truthfully, many communities do studies in six months. Many, many communities. You know, it, 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 it's a matter of staying focused on the, the task in front of us and, and not being led afield. So with that being said, Neil, thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Thanks.
Uh, we'll see you in two weeks. We have a lot of questions for you soon. Okay, there's one item that we talked about that was on for the regular meeting. And I explained why it had to be on for the regular meeting. Uh, this has to do with the state of the sound. Uh, potential, you know, uh, legal uh, quandary. This is the Arcadis proposal uh, with completion of CMA in addition to phase one sewer rehabilitation project. This will be in a vice council. Okay, that's a vice I'm sorry, I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, Mayor, right. Mayor, I think it's going to be a, a, a executive session item. As a vice council. Let me see that. Okay. Any, in any case, uh, let me say I, I'm, I'm recused in this matter and I will do so uh, when we enter. I'll stay out okay. of it. You know what, Victor? We'll do it last when we go to executive session so that you can just pop off that. Fair enough? All right. Yep. Fair enough. Except, Mayor, to the extent that, that the board wants to discuss the proposal, but not the legal issues, you may want to do that in the work session so that you can yeah. advance yeah. it to Thank the regular you. session tonight. Thank you, Bob. Good point. I have a, I do have a couple of questions about it. So I'm, Before you start, Nora, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. Oh, you have to, uh, yeah. the, the way it was explained, it, it it's connected to save the sound. So if there is a chain of, if, if that's what's forcing this, and it's really unfortunate, I've been five years recusing on this, it doesn't, so I would need to continue recusing if it's tied to, but I don't know because I it haven't tied. tied to the legal session. I see the manager saying it is tied. Right, so, we'll wait for time. Th th so then I'm, I'm getting out of this yeah. at this point. No, don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't get out. We're not going to do it. We're going to go into executive session. We'll do it at the end because it's time to go into executive session anyway. But then how do we discuss it in public if we want to put yeah. it on the agenda? Yeah. If you how give me. This? How about this? Can we just agree yeah. to put it on the regular Laura, agenda? Yeah, yeah. We, we could just move that it's going to be on a regular agenda in the work session, in, in the regular advice agenda anyway. That's better. It's on there anyway. Okay. And all the backup is there. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go through these one at a time. Uh, I'm going to make the motion of somebody with second. The village of Mamaric versus the seller. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered and entered into executive session pursuant to 105-1D of the Public Safety Officers Law to discuss pending litigation. I am making that motion. Second. Okay. Okay, lose a second. Call it, Sally. Trustee Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The four. Yes. Oh, you're recused on this one, though. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Acela. Okay, take a take a pass on this one. Uh, Are you talking about Acela? Yes. Yeah. Not recused. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. The next one. No and <laughs> Mayor Murphy. Hi. Save the Sound versus Village of America. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter the executive session pursuant to 105-1D of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters of pending litigation. Second. Oh, I so moved. Well. All right, I'll second. Go ahead, Sally. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four, you are recused from this as well, correct? Yes. Yes. And Mayor Murphy. Hi. Update on PBA negotiations. It is anticipated that a motion, I'm making a motion uh, that the PBA will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1e of the New York Public Officers Law for update on PBA negotiations. I made the motion. Second. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, item D, uh, Village Manager Performance Review of 2021. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1F of the New York State Public Officers Law. I Aye. make that motion. Second. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. 
Village Manager EEOC complaint against Board of Trustees. It is in pursuant to 105.1B of the New York Public Office Act. I make that motion. Second. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dan, are we going to go through this again? and not have a discussion that this board needs it's to have. The, the motion was to go into executive session. I guess the, the, the board can go into executive session. No, are you not recusing yourself? That's the question, Dan. When we get to executive session, I'll give you the answer. You know, here's the problem with not changing the ethics law is that I'm afraid to even refer this because it's going to cost us a hundred and something thousand dollars for his attorney. But this is call the roll. Trustee Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No, because Trustee Natchez will recuse himself. All right, let's go to executive no, session. You don't know that, Tom, but that's fine. But you, you, you don't vote on doing something where you're recusing yourself. There's also one other matter that is uh, that should be an executive session. Uh, Adam sent us a, a draft for comment on Goldstein Manor. Adam's not here. And you, you, we don't put things on executive session anymore right at the meeting. If you want to put something in an executive session, send it in. He asked for comment and nobody commented. I'll see you in executive session.
recording in progress.
Oh, this is too.
progress.
Hi, everyone. The mayor asked that I let you know that the meeting will start at 830. Thank you for your patience.
What is this? You have me on here? Yep. Okay. Got it. Is that current up there? Why not? Oh, these um, guys, these guys. You don't see my power kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, this is nothing. Off the pipes are in the air, like climbing over top of pipes. Nothing wonderful. Can people hear me? We didn't actually just people can't hear me. Use our license. It was a it was a plant, a power plant. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's I mean they had to put sensors in their right. pipes. They're like three foot round pipes on the top of the I think they're some pipes. I think they have the sensors or something. Okay, we're unmuted. All right, can you, all right, you were unmuted. Are we broadcasting as they say? I'll see you, sir. Yes, everything's live. Okay. okay. There we are. All right. Good evening, folks. Uh, welcome to the Village of Mamaric Board of Trustees meeting for March 28th. Uh, I, I, I apologize uh, for the tardiness. Uh, the executive session uh, ran over. Uh, sometimes these situations cannot be avoided, but the business of the government proceeds. Uh, please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Very nice use of the phone. Uh, good evening. Uh, the first item on the agenda is to open the meeting. Uh, no, actually, the first item on the agenda is to close the work session. I need a motion to close the so work session. Move made the motion. May I have a second, please? Can somebody second, Nora? Nora, no, you're muted, right? You, it, she can't unmute. What's going on here? There you go. Try uh, Okay. Yes, a second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There, there's an agenda in front of us. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Uh, Sally, call roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? I'm not Trustee, here. He's here yet. I don't think he's on yet. And Mayor Murphy. Hi. Uh, next, first item on the agenda is a presentation <coughs> by the young uh, men and women from Marinick High School, Okra students on this summer project. Okay, and and who is uh, going to lead this parade tonight? I'll Luna. lead. The, uh, I'll lead the presentation. All right. All right. Uh, is it fine if I share my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Um, all right. Uh, I. Yes, I am Luca Jobio. I am a junior here at Marinick High School. Uh, I'm Griffin McIntyre. I'm also junior at Marinette High School. Uh, and uh, my name is Eli Tannenbaum, and I'm also a junior at Marinette High School. Um, we are all students in the OCA program at the high school, and we're here to present to you our summer slide prevention initiative. Um, if you guys have any questions, please hold them until the end. Um, we'll have time at the end to ask questions. 
Um, so we are here today seeking uh, your approval to use a section of the Pate Memorial Park near Mamaroneck Avenue School as a site for our initiative. Um, our goal is to ensure that you are all well informed on the progress of our initiative as we roll it out in the coming months. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with OCRA, but just to go over it, OCRA stands for Original Civic Research in Action. It provides students with the opportunity to research local issues in the community, where they then narrow down their research to one issue and then implement a creative solution or preventive method for it, and then collect data on it to measure the effectiveness. Um, so as a group, we started by researching uh, an education inequality within our community, and we pinpointed what is called the summer slide as one of the most prominent causes of the education inequality. Um, and we also were able to connect a lack of book access to um, literary skills development issues. So pretty much um, if there is a lack of access to books, students were having a more difficult time developing their literacy skills. Um, the summer slide is a term for the loss of knowledge that students experience over the summer. Uh, students of low socioeconomic status are more susceptible to the summer slide uh, because they're not, they're often do not have access to enriching activities and materials over the summer, uh, including the steady access to books that they had during the school year. Uh, over time, the greater losses uh, for these students uh, accumulate. And uh, as shown in the graph, the gap between them and the students with higher socioeconomic background grows very large. Uh, now we're going to take you through, you know, the lack of access of books uh, and how that's a main issue, a big issue in the community. Um, the students in the village of Maranek have great access to books through the Maranek Public Library and through the school district. But research suggests that book ownership is an important factor in the uh, literacy development um, among students. Uh, yeah, uh, so we came across a few studies um, from this book, uh, No More Summer Reading Loss, um, showing uh, essentially that reading achievement in students directly correlates uh, with the amount of books available in the home. Um, they also found that more affluent households had two to three times more books in the home, uh, which explains the gap in reading skills between the children of low and high socioeconomic status. Uh, this research proves why our initiative, uh, which is focused on providing books for students with low socioeconomic status to keep in their homes, uh, will have a strong impact on the reading skills of those students. Um, so this book desert map from Unite for Literacy is color coded by area to show the percentage of homes that own over 100 books. The dark green being the area with the highest percentage of homes that own more than 100 books and the more reddish colors are the areas with the least number of homes owning over 100 books. So these images um, show the percentages in certain areas of our own community. Uh, here in the image on the left, you can see that we circled the proposed location for our initiative and that it resides in a more orange or reddish area, while the areas around it remain a prominent green. Uh, this data clearly, clearly shows that this specific area of the community would benefit most from our initiative. Uh, in both the village of Larchmont and the village of Maranek, there aren't many options in regards to pur purchasing books in person. <laughs> Larchmont is fortunate enough to have Anderson's Bookstore, which is stocked with children's books, both in English and in Spanish. However, in the village of Mamaroneck, the only place to purchase books is the CBS Mamaroneck Avenue, which is a location that has been uh, closed due to flooding from the damage from Hurricane Ida. While purchasing books online is an option, many families of lower socioeconomic status have a more difficult time ordering books online due to factors such as a lack of a credit card and the lack of a steady mailing address. The public libraries do offer an expansive collection of books. However, the research shows that the most effective way in curbing the summer slide is to increase the number of books in the home. Uh, now we will be briefly describe the existing efforts being made to prevent this issue. Uh, the Mamaroneck school system already have very strong efforts to curb the effects of the summer slide for its students. Uh, their main initiative is the, 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 their book giveaway program, um, which hands out a number of books to students who qualify for free and reduced lunch at the beginning of the summer. Uh, this giveaway happens only once throughout the summer. Um, and other efforts associated with our schools include the co-op camp run in the summer and the Dos Caminos program. And now we're going to take you through our plan and how it specifically helps students affected by the summer slide and works uh, complementary to programs run by the district. 
As a group, we are going to construct a freestanding book depot at the Pate Memorial Park that will be in use for the summer months. The depot is located in the heart of the community and proximity helps increase access and engagement with the depot. We will provide a constant stream of, of books to students living in the area with a strong emphasis on third through fifth graders as they are, the, they are the age that is most affected by the summer slide. During the summer, we will run weekly book talks with students in the community to increase engagement with the Book Depot. And we are also working closely with Moranic Avenue School to promote our initiative, increase engagement among students and build a community ownership over the depot. We are working closely with the administration of Maranek Avenue School to ensure that the kids develop this sense of ownership that is so key to making this a success. We are planning to, for the students to participate in a design contest where the final design and theme of the depot will be chosen by the students. We are also working with the MAS uh, administration to publicize both the kickoff event and the book club meetings through existing messaging systems in use by the school. Uh, we chose this location shown in the image, in the image uh, for its nice seating area, proximity to Maranek Avenue School and location with the community. Uh, we initially considered placing it on MAS property, but decided on a public park near it uh, because we wanted it to feel like a part of the community and to have the students and community members take ownership of it. And we really want the students to view it as a fun community activity and spot uh, rather than just associate it with school. Here is a 3D model uh, we designed and what it would potentially look like in the proposed location. Uh, this is a basic model for now, as we do have plans for the students to participate in a design contest and help decorate it themselves. <coughs> um, all maintenance such as refurbishments or refilling of books will be done by us. Um, because this initiative takes place during the summertime, we have extra free time to be consistently maintaining the depot. Uh, after the summer is ended, we will examine its success and decide whether or not we want to continue our initiative in the future. Um, and if so, we would search for organizations or groups uh, within Maranek High School that would be able to maintain it. And listed here um, are the funds we have graciously received to pay for both the cost of books and the structure itself. Uh, we would like to thank the Maranek Schools Foundation, Ms. Ward, and the district for funding the creation of our book depot. And then here is a list of the community members we have worked with to get to this point. We are extremely grateful for all the, for all the help they've provided us with, and we will continue to be working with them in the future. Thank you all for your time. Um, right now is the moment to ask any questions, if you guys have any. Uh, I, th I think that this is just an absolutely great initiative, uh, and, and hopefully it will help uh, stem the slide. I know that that is uh, one of the main goals of uh, co-op camp and uh, this, this this works nicely in the tandem you know I, just, just also just one thing I wanted to point out that the, the library does sell books too uh, downstairs in the basement they have a room where they sell books but I, I think part of the problem uh, might be families not having a disposable income to devote to books uh, and you know that's a shame and I, I, that's why this is so important and I thank you, gentlemen, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments for the young men? Mayor? Yes. I'm going to need photographs for the newsletter when uh, when they get it built and put it up. Okay. Can you gentlemen do that too? Yeah, it, we, we, we will definitely do that. Yeah, we'll definitely, definitely take photos and make sure they get to you for the newsletter. Thanks, Luca. Take Thanks. Photos, we, take photos with yourselves next to it. Mm -hmm. yeah suitable for your college applications. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. And, and is, there, yes, please. is there anything that the village can do to assist you on this? Um, so we've been, we've been meeting with uh, and corresponding with Mr. On, which uh, is the foreman of the parks, Village of Marinac, And we've um, discussed different ways of implementing it. Um, you know, we were kind of pitching this idea to him of um, putting these poles in the ground, maybe like metal poles in the ground, um, because this is going to be in place during the summer, it'd be easy if we can have something that we can almost just place it onto and then, you know, lock it into for the summer. And then at the end of the summer, lift it back out of it. And next summer, it'll be easy to put it back into the ground because the, the poles are still, will still be in ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and it would also be uh, make it a lot easier if there was any um, incoming weather, like a hurricane or something, that would really damage uh, the structure. That we could take it out easily and put it in like one of our garages or something to keep it safe. Well, Eli, I hope that we never comes to that. <laughs> but I, I appreciate you thinking about it. And if anybody could come up with a solution on how to best uh, mount this, it is Mr. Ahn. But thank you, Joan. Good luck in the future. Thank you. I always say the Marinex chief export is smart children. <laughs> <laughs> Go out and make us proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next, we have a presentation of a payroll audit by the Bonadio Group. And Mr. Doyle will be presenting, or is it? Adam. Adam will be presenting. Hey, Adam, how are you? Good, good. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, my name's Adam Kozeli from the Bonadio Group. Um, I was a manager on this project. Um, Tim Doyle, the partner, he's also on the call as well. Um, thank you for having us uh, this evening, and I'm just going to briefly walk through the presentation, which um, was sent out earlier. Um, so the uh, village engaged us to do a review of your payroll activities for 2018, 2019, and 2020. The objective of this review was, one, to make sure that all employees are being paid at the appropriate rate. Two, that the overtime that is being earned is being paid at the appropriate rate, is being, you know, appropriately approved and the supporting documentation to support those hours is being retained. And the third area we looked into was the uh, village's health care plan and you know for employees that opted into the health care plan to make sure the amount that's being deducted from their um, from their pay each week is or each pay period is appropriate. And also on the other hand for people who opted out of the uh, health care plan that they're receiving the appropriate stipends and the appropriate amount. So as part of this review, we requested the collective bargaining agreements that are in place, payroll registers for the time period, timesheets related to overtime, payroll authorizations, authorizations of employee healthcare contributions, and open enrollment authorizations for all employees that have opted out of the health insurance benefit. Okay, so for the results of our review, so for the review of the salaries, um, we were able to confirm that all individuals in the uh, village were being paid the uh, you know the, their appropriate rate for the years that we reviewed 2018, 2019, 2020. Um, the one area to bring up is it wasn't always necessarily clear which step um, some of the union employees were on. Um, you know it's, it's easy to figure out for some employees. You know if they they've been there for four years, they're on step four. But for some employees, when they start, they start on a step other than one. And we didn't necessarily have the, you know, the documentation to support, you know, which step all of the individuals are supposed to be on. However, working with HR and with uh, Murray and Danielle, we were able to resolve all those issues and determine that, yes, all individuals, full-time individuals were being paid the appropriate amounts. Now on the part-time um, employees, we were not able to verify that the rates that they were getting paid was approved or you know, there was no documentation to show an approved rate. In general, they were reasonable. However, the part-time salaries are approved as a total budget amount and not necessarily as, okay, this crossing guard is gonna make this amount per hour and things like that. So one of the recommendations you'll see we have um, there is that this uh, a list of all part-time employees and what their appropriate rates is maintained. And, um, you know, all changes are, or to the rates or increases are, are you know, documented and, and approved. So there's a, a, a paper trail to show um, what the proper part-time employee rate should be. We're also gonna recommend um, that the, the village develop an HR filing system to have all the necessary information readily available related to individual salaries. Um, like I said earlier, the, uh, you know, it wasn't always readily available to determine which step an individual is on. So we're recommending that, you know, a, a, a sheet or a file is maintained showing, you know, how much each individual is making, what their um, uh, step they're on, you know, showing approvals of salary increases and everything like that. Now, I know from speaking to 
um, you know, Danielle and Maria, that they've, they've started this process. Um, you know, since our audit began, they've been building up on this process. So it's something that's moving forward. We have um, there is that. It's Adam, can I say one thing? Yes, sir. So in the most recent um, negotiated contract with the um, CSEA union, uh, we eliminated the step guide. So individuals start at a starting salary and then they just get incremental increases um, uh, based on whatever percentage is negotiated. So going forward, this process, that issue will be eliminated. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And uh, thanks for letting me know. Sure. Um, does anybody have any other questions or comments before I move into the next two areas? Okay, so the next area of our review was overtime. We reviewed all of the overtime that was paid out to all employees over the course of a three-year period. And in all instances, we were able to determine that the rate that they were getting paid was, was appropriate. Um, we also looked into the timesheets and for the approvals, and that uh, process is a very manual process. Um, the uh, you know, time cards are handwritten. You know, the, it wasn't always legible on what the hours were or what the you know, who the approver was. And for two of the um, pay periods, we were actually were not able to uh, receive the supporting documentation for the overtime. Um, you know, in discussions with, uh, with Maria, we just they could not locate it. I think that was in the March and April timeframe of 2018, I believe. Um, so for here, and I think this is also something that's in process, we we're gonna recommend that you institute a, an electronic time card um, you know, time card application that will much more easily track individuals' hours, will be able to run reports, the, the, all this information will be retained. Um, and, you know, I, I think Danielle told me uh, earlier today that they're phasing this time card process in. So I think that's going to be a good step and it'll help, you know, eliminate all of this manual documentation. <clears throat> the last area that we reviewed was the um, you know, the, the healthcare deduction. So we, we took a look at individuals who were who had opted in to the healthcare plan and made sure that the amounts that were being you know deducted from their pay each period was appropriate, and that was the case. And we also reviewed uh, the stipend payments for all individuals who are paid who receive a payment because they opted out of the healthcare plan. We reviewed all of those. Um, and uh, you know, we were able to tie them out based on the approved listing that was provided to us by human resources. Um, we were not provided like the individual forms for all of the individuals like showing who, who signed up and who didn't sign up. We, we did our review based on uh, a list being maintained by human resources, but we didn't note any issues in, in doing this review. So for this area, um, we're gonna recommend that the, somebody independent of the person who is performing the uh, payroll activities or processing the payroll um, do a, a review of the, like a spot check review, I'd say, you know, you do it quarterly or monthly, you know, take 10, 15 employees, take a look at what their deductions are, are being for the, what their deductions are for the healthcare and make sure it's in line with the contract and the appropriate amounts. And also I think there should be an independent review of the amounts and, who the checks are going to related to the um, opt-out payments that are being received in June and December. Um, some of the independent of the payroll process should you know, do a review to make sure that those amounts are, are appropriate and signed off on before they're issued. Okay. All right, so that's, that's our report. And I wanna thank Marie and Danielle for all of their help. It was a, you know, a pretty long process and I, I'm grateful for their assistance. I, I appreciate them as well. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions or concerns from the board? Um, if anybody on the staff can explain the missing overtime records from March or April from 2018, to what, what was the deal with that? I wasn't here. All right. They, Danielle, they, I don't think was here either. So. I mean, are no, they just? I was not here. Is it just a gap? Well, I mean, there was a transition point where um, the former managers, we had like a two managers within 16 months. So, you know, it's a revolving door. So what ends up happening is that uh, I think that at, that at the same time, the, um, the office staff for the manager's office, I believe was either um, planning to retire or, you know, within the final months of retirement. So who knows, but I don't know. We don't, it, I, don't have that. I scanned the, uh, the, OT that was actually paid out during that period and, and didn't notice anything that was unreasonable 
or or variants okay. from, from prior weeks. So um, it yeah. didn't appear that there was anything you know, inappropriate or anything extreme from an OT perspective during those time frames. I think it was just a matter of loss. All right. All right. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right. Thanks, thank Tim. you. Take care, Adam. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Laura, for being on this call. Um, Laura's not going anywhere. Well, well, I still thank her. Okay, okay. Consider so. yourself pre-thanked, Laura. It sounded, it sounded like a dismissal. That's all. That's all. Okay. Next item on the agenda is communication to the board. Uh, this morning I received, and the whole board received, a, an email uh, from the flood committee that I promised them I would read into the record, and I'm going to read it right now. <clears throat> Dear Mayor and Board of Trustees and Village Manager, on March 22nd, 2022, uh, the FEMAC, which is the Flood Committee, uh, meeting by Zoom, the 30 Mimaric resident, it should be residents, attendees, uh, the, the most since the September flood, and at the other FEMAC meetings, it was apparent that both members of the FEMAC and community members are dissatisfied with the progress of flood protection in the Village of Mimaric. The FEMAC takes its role as flood mitigation advisor to the VOM very seriously and has been working at the issues below relentlessly. This letter is an attempt to begin to lay a path for better flood control in the village of America, a process for moving forward together for a drier Mamara. The tipping point uh, for this dissatisfaction was a March 10th, 2022, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers meeting between the mayor and the village manager, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and reps from various government agencies. There was no prior heads up discussions with, nor representation from FEMAC. FEMAC has been requesting a meeting since the fall of 2021. In addition, the trustees were unaware of the meeting, nor were they informed afterwards. This dissatisfaction can be summed up on three fronts, communication and cooperation between FEMAC and the Village of Marek, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers project, projects the Village of Marek can address itself. Fundamental to these two fronts is the need for transparency, communication and participation between the Village of Marek trustees and the administration, FEMAC, members of our community and the ACE. FEMAC politely and assertively requests again that the items be addressed immediately as a way to move forward so that community members can be provided with better flood protection starting ASAP. Attendance at the FEMAC, these are the numbered items. One, uh, attendance at the FEMAC monthly meetings by village staff, village manager, assistant manager, designee, or the mayor. Meetings with and continued discussion with the U U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, during the 2016-2017 discussions with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers members and community members, we're told time and time again that the issues raised during the planning phase uh, concluded in, I guess this is, it, it, I guess it's 2.17, I don't know what it, uh, would be addressed at the start of the design phase. Currently, we're hearing input will be accepted by ACE at, which is the Army Corps of Engineers, at 60% design. This is way too late for successful projects. FEMAC needs a seat at the ACE meetings as soon as, des as design begins. So issues raised during 26, 27 meetings with the community, FEMAC, and VOM administration can begin to be addressed. Projects the Village of Marinette can address. There are many projects that the Village of Marinette can begin in-house. FEMAC has been requesting pre and post ida that these projects be implemented ASAP. At the March FEMAC meeting, community members expressed frustration and anger that these projects were not being addressed. Projects include cleaning the rivers of debris, removing silt buildups, uh, regular and emergency maintenance of storm drains, uh, identifying and securing floatables, identifying and communicating emergency parking areas, uh, improving the flood alert system, uh, additional trash removal from home cleanouts, Ray Ida, removal of the road to nowhere. Uh, we, the FEMAC and community members are looking to move forward together for a dry Mimaric by communicating and participating transparently with the Village of Mimaric trustees, administration and the Army Corps. Sincerely, FEMAC members. 
Okay, there's just a couple of things that uh, I want to point out. Yes, there was a meeting on March 10th, 2022. Or it wasn't March 8th, I forget. Uh, the tipping point. Uh, that was between the mayor and the village manager. Okay, what this meeting was, was this was a meeting between the governmental entities to decide what their re individual responsibilities were toward the plan. The village manager had emailed the whole village board about the, the meeting <coughs> happening. I attended for the first 10 meetings, 10 minutes at a meeting, basically just to thank all of the participants, all of the governmental agencies for all the hard work they were doing for the village of Mamaroneck, to tell them how much we appreciated that. And I asked them, What's, as soon as, what's the soonest possible time we can have a meeting with the community and the Army Corps of Engineers? At which time they told me that it was at the 60% design phase. After that, I went back to work. And then the staff dealt with the, the governmental agencies. And with the, what this was, was a get to know each other meeting of the major governments. It was the New York State DEC, Westchester County, Village of Mamaroneck, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, and a representative, I believe, from Senator Schumer's office. So this was not a vast meeting to talk about design, a meeting to talk about the plan in particular. More, it was a meeting to talk about whose responsibility was what and how that was going to be hashed out. I did not participate in that part of it. Uh, and I, I had nothing to report back other than that I, I thanked those uh, who were helping us, which I believe was my place to do as the mayor of this community, to let other governmental agencies know that we appreciate their support and we depend upon their support and to show that appreciation by showing up and saying thank you. I did that in the middle of my work day and then I went back to work. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, another item, Currently, we are hearing that input will be accepted by ACE at 60% design. This is way too late for a successful project. I just want to remind folks of what we have here. This is a plan that was approved by the Army Corps of Engineers already. This is not a new plan. This is a plan that was presented to the village. This is a plan that in sum and substance is the plan we have. This plan was funded under the Ida Relief Act with a specific mind toward the village of Mamari. Senator Schumer put in the Ida Relief Act that any plan that was approved by the Army Corps of Engineers already would then be funded by the Army Corps, by, by the Ida Relief Act. This absolved the village of Mamari and the county of Westchester of any financial responsibility for this plan. You know, this was all communicated to everyone. This was communicated to the board of trustees. The fact that this meeting was happening was communicated to the board of trustees. Uh, there was no nefarious uh, plotting, no nefarious uh, you know, plans being laid out without public input. And you know, I explained this and I explained it to the flood committee. And I, I'm sorry that I, I, I didn't explain it adequately. Uh, and you know, I just want to point out some of the items that they talked about uh, that weren't happening do happen. There is regular and emergency maintenance of storm drains. Uh, we have approved a flood alert system that you know is going to be in the budget this year. Uh, removal of additional trash from homes after Ida. There has never been more trash picked up or more efficient cleanup of a community than this village had after Ida. Uh, I, 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 you know, it, it's amazing to me that, you know, the folks that have lived through all the floods, ask them how they felt about what happened this time. This was the first time the village of Mamaroneck ever pumped out anybody's basement. We did that this year. We picked up more garbage in two days that we usually pick up in three months. Uh, you know, removal of the road to nowhere. Road to nowhere is in Harrison. It is not in the village of Mamaroneck. I have facilitated two meetings between the mayor of Harrison and members of the flood committee. 
The first was when I first became mayor and Mayor Belmont was mayor of Harrison. The second was very recently where I met with uh, the past chair of the flood committee and the present chair of the flood committee out on the road to nowhere with the present mayor of Harrison. And he told us he would look into it and get back to us. He got back to us and basically said, Harrison isn't interested in doing this. Now, that might be something that uh, you know, Westchester County might get involved in, but the Army Corps of Engineers plan that we now have does not include removing that road. Uh, and let me just let folks know something. This is the plan we have now. I'm not saying we can't have input in it and we can't have you know, uh, our voices heard, but we're not getting a new plan. If we ask for a new plan, this is all gone tomorrow and we go back to square one. Square one, I'm telling you, if it ever happens, 15 years out, if it gets approved again. But why would the federal government do all that work for a community that would then have twice, twice, turned down an Army Corps of Engineers plan? So while I understand the frustration and I understand the fear and I understand you know, the, the trepidation that our residents have every time it rains really hard. We have never, ever, ever been this close before. We're on the one yard line. And I know people don't think things are happening, but things are happening. You know, Trustee Young has proposed a, a vast increase in the, uh, the, the budget for river cleanups in this community. Which, which has not been going on in the past few years with, with the, the regularity that it should be going on. I was going on. to mention, we didn't, we didn't get to it in the work session. And we will get to it in a, in a future work session. But I, I just, you know, I want to work in cooperation with the flood committee. But, you know, we, we, we also have to tell people what the facts are. And, you know, I wanted to be uh, the liaison to the flood committee. Uh, Trustee Natchez decided he wanted to do that, so I, you know I, I, I let that go. But I will be attending the flood committee meetings because I think it's important that you know when issues like this come up, we can have that discussion right away. Uh, you know, I talked to the chair of the flood committee in the past couple of days, and I told him how I how I viewed this and how I viewed you know what has happened, and you know so I I. I and looking forward to working in cooperation and in tandem, but you know we all have to be on the same page with our facts. And uh, you know I I just want to point out that that meeting, which I attended for ten minutes to give a, a salutation and to ask them to uh, more quickly meet with the community, was between government agencies and to to hash out who had what responsibility. And it wasn't about design or anything like that. So with that being that, and uh, I, I thank you for the indulgence of allowing me to explain my side of that. May, may? Lou, yeah. I, I, the, I listened to a lot of it and, 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 and Trustee Natchez can attest that, that they are very, very disappointed uh, in, in, in us collectively uh, uh, for what we haven't, done yet. Not that, not that our hearts haven't been in the right places, but we simply haven't done enough uh, uh, by their lights. And I think the thing we can do is that they talk about the immediate addressing of the debris and silt buildup. I had I took two tours of the rivers, and, and I know the other trustees, uh, Nora and, and, and Dan and, and, uh, and Vicar, have all taken tr uh, tours before. There's things there we can do As right away. And we have the line, we have the, the, the program and the budget, uh, we have the money that we could put into it, um, and, and we can let them know immediately that we we care enough to, to just start doing something. They just want to see us do something, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Sure. So that's 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 it, and we'll we'll get to that. And and uh, uh, I I would hope that we could just all agree that that needs to happen uh, quickly because it, it you know the, this last flood really traumatized people. What right about? Okay, so that, that's, that's all. All right, we have participants with their hands up, but now it's uh, communication to the board. I just want to remind everyone, communication to the board, uh, you have five minutes, which is ample. 
I, I like to remind people that the Gettysburg Address was 272 words, <laughs> and it took two and a half minutes, and it explained the origin, uh, the progress, and uh, the uh, aftermath, or what the proposed aftermath of the Civil War. Now, I don't expect everybody to be Lincoln, but uh, we don't have the Civil War either. Oh, and we've been joined by Augie Fusco. Good evening. Hey, there he is. Uh, okay, Mr. Gill. Let's go with Mr. Gill. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. So, Mayor, thank you for reading the letter. Thank you all for paying attention to this, these issues. Um, so, I guess I would like to only talk about one thing, and that's the Army Corps project. And Tom, I understand, Mayor Tom, that the core and the meeting that you had was very kind of preliminary. What I experienced five years ago with, with the villagers was anger five times worse than we saw last Tuesday night. And there was a whole bunch of questions. Where was the center line of the river gonna go? How are the easements gonna be taken, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the Army's Corps response again and again, as I said in the letter, was that at the beginning of the design project uh, process, they would sit down with us and address these things. And so I really think that I'm not talking about taking bridges in or out. All I'm saying is all of these maybe minute or minute questions that our villagers had that were not answered last time, they said they would answer them at the beginning of the design phase. And I'd really like to hold them to that because I think that will make the project successful. And I think if we go down the road to 60% and we don't get this stuff on the table, then there's gonna be a big hue and cry and, and, and I'd like to avoid that. So I appreciate all the things that you all have been doing for the village. I thank you very much. I really would like to push the core to answer those questions that we had the last time. So that's, that's my two cents. Uh, and Tony, I just want to let you know, uh, and, and I, I, I do enjoy dialogue with you and I, and I think you, you're doing a great job. So let me get that off the table there. But I, I will tell you this, I called uh, Senator Schumer's office today and I asked them to have the uh, Army Corps, you know, give us a date certain and to please speed it up. So I, I did make that call today. All right, great. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, you all. Have a good evening. Okay, you too. Right, let's Thanks, get popular, Mr. Tibbet. Say that again? I said, let's get, I'm just calling the next, the, the next uh, participant. Hello, am I am I heard? Yes. Good evening. Welcome to April, where the toughest decision you have to make is, do you eat the ears or the tail first, or do you like the yellow or pink peeps better? Uh, on the flood. <laughs> on the flood, uh, Lou is absolutely correct. The with the um, Rivers do need a lot of work, and hopefully you will um, once again have a uh, work crew that will be maintaining the rivers on a regular basis when it's brought up at the next meeting. Uh, the kids did a great presentation. Uh, two suggestions is they ought to do a book drive. There are homes that have literally hundreds of books that they could donate, lightly read books that they could no donate from one part of the village to the other. And I always say with organizations like this, do a GoFundMe, uh, uh, state your case. And this uh, community is very, very generous with uh, donations for that, for that type of uh, project. Um, we, um, basically are coming back to the uh, spring. Uh, we're gonna be uh, doing the uh, budget soon. I look for a lot of uh, import for that. Uh, the other one that was mentioned was the transfer station. Jerry mentioned on the transfer station that we're doing it in-house. Did we um, 
uh, did we spend any money on planning or did we also do the planning in house? Oh, we didn't spend any money on planning yet. Uh, that comes as part of the package. Okay. So basically it would be planning and the materials. We're doing that in house. Did we ever uh, do the Harbor master uh, roof or are we going to also do that in house? We completed the Harbor rest roof. We didn't do it in house. We're, we're, we didn't, uh, we didn't build that in house. Okay. And did we, we ever uh, address the uh, the schoolhouse that also had a leak? Uh, I don't think we did, but I have to check. Dan, do you remember that one? Um, I, I can't recall. I know there's some. I can't recall, Glenn. Our mind is like mush most time, most days. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was brought up at the same time. The little schoolhouse might need some roof work too. Thank you. Okay. Good night, Glenn. Uh, next up is Robert. Robert, unmute yourself, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. At the Village's Board of Trustees March 14th meeting, one second, I made the comment that I wished all members of the board would not make negative comments about one another, as I was disturbed by the exchanges I had observed during that meeting and previous meetings. In response, the mayor shook his head, raised his voice and attacked my integrity and did his best to intimidate me. By his very comments and tone, he made clear the reason for my remarks. Why is it so hard for some people to accept that sometimes not everyone will agree with everything one says or does. In fact, it is okay to disagree and even disapprove of some of the things others say or do. My exchange with the mayor was mentioned in the Lowhead article entitled Endorsement of Mimernic Trustee Divides Democrats, published on March 16, 2022. Anyone interested in listening to that exchange will find it on LMC media titled Village of Mimernick Board of Trustees, March 14th, 2022 on YouTube. This personal attack by the mayor is unfortunately a pattern for him. He repeatedly misuses his position to publicly denigrate any individuals not aligned with his policy positions or who oppose his ideas. He shouts and talks over anyone with whom he doesn't agree. There are residents who have been shocked and appalled by the mayor's impolite conduct, both publicly and privately. His inability to respect other opinions or collaborate with colleagues. His use of the press and social media to spread ugly and unsubstantiated innuendo regarding village officials and residents and his demeaning references to residents. The mayor of the village of Mamaroneck has no right to try to embarrass, ridicule, or intimidate a resident slash citizen who is calling in to offer constructive criticism regarding the behavior or the actions of members of the Board of Trustees. It is beneath the dignity of the office of the mayor and does not serve our village well. Thank you, Robert. Uh, next up is Maria D. Maria D. Fiore. Maria, do you have your hand up? Maria, unmute yourself. I think she, she was on for the regular meeting. Yeah, uh, it's a different Maria D. I don't think Maria D. Maria De Fiore is a panelist. Oh, okay. Then, then go to Maria D. I'm sorry. It's a different person. Uh, well, why don't we go to Maria D. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hi, I just wanted to say that I was in attendance at the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee on the meetings on the 22nd. And that was when I learned that there was a meeting 
um, between the mayor, the village manager, and the Army Corps of Engineers on March 10th. Um, I, I was shocked to learn this information, as was everybody else who was at that meeting. So I went back to the uh, Board of Trustees uh, recording of the work session and regular meeting on March 14th. And there was no mention of flooding during the meeting, but flooding was discussed during the work session. And on March 14th, four days after this meeting, no mention was made of the Army Corps meeting during the work session while flooding was being discussed with the chair of the Flood Mitigation Advisory Department. I find this lack of transparency appalling. The residents and business owners of our community who continue to suffer the effects of flooding deserve more respect and constant communication from you, even if it is to just say, there is a meeting, this is the date. And then after the meeting, come back and say, nothing was discussed, nothing of value was discussed. I just introduced myself. The people need to know. People are suffering from flooding constantly in this village and the lack of communication is apprehensible. This lack of transparency and communication cannot continue. In order to ensure that something like this does not happen in the future, I respectfully request that this board of trustees consider perhaps appointing a different member of the board to be the lead coordinator with the village manager on the Army Corps project. There is no excuses, blatant lack of transparency and communication in our village, and it needs to be corrected now. If we can't have someone who's going to communicate, then we need to appoint someone who can. Yeah, uh, I just want to point out, Maria, and I thought I was clear. The board was aware that there was going to be a meeting. Jerry sent an email saying there was going to be a meeting. You know, the, the, that might not have been communicated at the flood committee meeting, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but it should have been because it was knowledge known by the board. Uh, I was there for 10 minutes. I had nothing to report. And I'm sorry that you're upset about that, but there was not uh, anything substantive to report because I was just there in my capacity as mayor to thank them and to uh, hope that they you know, continue working hard for our community, which I think is my responsibility. And frankly, I'll keep doing that responsibility, but thank you for your input. I understand that mayor, I understand you were the goodwill ambassador, but the meeting continued after the 10 minutes that you were there That's and correct. no one was given a report as to what happened until just now when you received a letter from the flood mitigation advisory committee demanding to know what happened otherwise none of this would have come out if it hadn't been by happenstance that the flood committee found out about it none of this would have come out we live in a democracy and we need to be transparent and nope. thank you for your time I'm, I, I really take umbrage at that. I have been extremely transparent. I have been breaking, you know, my neck to try and get this flood plan done. You know, we 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 started a petition which thousands of people in this village signed. You know, I, I've been mentioning it and calling elected officials nonstop. Uh, I, I'm I'm sorry that you were disappointed at the flood committee meeting, but that is not the totality of what has happened in this community, and you know. You know, and also I think, you know, it, when, just for future reference, when you appear before the Board of Trustees to speak about an issue and you are an appointed member of a Board of Commission, you should identify yourself as that member. Uh, that, that is something that's in the Village Code. So the next time, please just identify that you're a member of the Ethics Board when you come before the Board to talk about an issue of your concern. And, you know, you can talk to the other members of the board, and I'm sure the ethics board, and they'll, they'll uh, tell you that that's, that's the protocol. But thank you. The next up is Mr. O'Connor. I assume it's Mr. O'Connor, Tim O. I'm sorry, you know what? You do Bernie first. Bernie was there first, and then we'll get to Tim. Hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes Bernie. Okay, um, I had a couple of statements, a couple of questions, maybe you can answer. Um, I'm not here to fight with you guys. Um, I, I, I think you guys are doing a good job, you know, trying to get this off of the, off of the ground. Good intentions, which I, I, I kind of like. Um, But there needs to be there needs to be a little bit more focus on this flood situation from all of you guys. Less fighting, 
you know, Lou, uh, Lou was on the mitigation going after uh, Dan Nanchez about political, you know, you voted for this. Uh, you know, I see you guys, uh, you know, the Army Corps of Engineer, we would, the plan was, 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 uh, was supposed to be done a few years ago, but Trump threw it down. I'm sick of all that stuff. We need to just focus and, and start concentrating on this. This should be the number one thing on your guys' agenda every single time that you come to these meetings. That's my, uh, <coughs> excuse me, my first thing. You said that the plan was already done through the Army Corps of Engineers. And um, my question is, if, it's, if it was already done and it's already there, then why are we waiting for this 60% for them to have this meeting? That's my first I, I question. Think, I, I, I think I'd like to try and take a shot at answering that. And Jerry, okay. if, if you could, if I miss something, please feel free to jump in here. Uh, you know, the outline of the plan was approved by Congress, I think in 2017. Uh, like any big engineering plan, they don't do the specific uh, drawings in the specific, uh, you know, environmental, you know, review and, 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 and looking at the environment that it's being built in until it's approved and until the money's there. So we're there now. And they're actually, yeah. you know, you, you send it, you, they, they send a set of plans out to be bid <coughs> upon, right? Yeah, but we, there's, we this, have, there's this plan that's on the website. No, Bernie, on your website. Let, let me finish. finish. Okay. That isn't big documents, right? That, that's a plan, a conceptual plan, which is okay. the basis for the bid documents. Okay. When, once they do the bid documents and, you know, they start that design, then they're going to, you know, and, and what I've been told, then they're going to confer with us and then they're going to send out, you know, those bid documents for mm -hmm. contractors to bid upon so that the work can be gun, begin. Jerry, okay. is that in some substance what it is? Yeah, Mayor, um, when Dan and I and uh, Chief Leahy at the time reviewed the 60% plans for the work that's going to be done on Mamaronic Avenue by the county, the 60% plans represent the time when the design team goes back to the community and asks for all the changes that they're looking for. So that's what, you can't change a design unless you have something preliminary. And that's what we did with Moranic Avenue. And that's why we were able to move uh, uh, Waverly no, Avenue. No, okay, that's fine. But there's a, there's a plan that's out there that was out there in, in, in uh, 07, after the 07 thing. And there was plan. this plan. Yeah. And there was this, there was this pipe that's going through Columbus Park and they're going to dredge the rivers. Is that the plan that they're going to do? Or is they, yes. they're going yes. through a whole yes. lead? No, yes. that's the plan, Vern. That's the plan. Okay, so, so why are they waiting for 60% to come out and have this meeting if the plan is already out there? That's my question is. Well, Jerry, just explain that again. So that you can recommend the design changes in the 60% plan. The 60% plan is barely halfway done. And so what you do is you look at the preliminary design that they're providing you and you recommend and make changes or negotiate those changes based on different factors, Vern. So- okay. Then it, then it goes to a 90% plan, which is almost done. And then at that okay. point, the final changes, the final adjustments are made to the plan. And then the final 100% plan and bid documents are produced. So that's the process for any engineering um, uh, project. So the plan was to create, the plan was developed to, to, to identify the funding that's needed, to see which partners were going to be moving, you know, to be participating in what in what level as far as you know millions of dollars. That plan, that plan has been in place. The money is now in place. And now they're yeah. starting to design it so that they can actually get the work done. Okay, but that plan that's out on your website is a construction plan. And it's it's I don't know if it's misleading. Maybe it's misleading to me. Maybe, I, you know, because no, it's, it's they're, it's they're putting a, in a pipe, they're they're <laughs> 
they're moving yeah. things around. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm looking at a control. We're, we're all worried about the construction plan. Like what's going to happen? Like, how are yeah. they going to do this? That's, that's what I think everyone's looking at. Like when, when are they going to, when are they going to bring the backhoes in and do this stuff? And I'm looking at it. Well, there should, I, I agree. There should be a plan, but yeah. what is the plan? And I think uh, that's why it's a little misleading on the website. You have a plan, an engineering plan, plan of construction plans on the website. The plan on the website is the plan that they're going to design documents okay. so that it can be put out to bid, so that it can be constructed. That's just a plan. They don't have the design okay. ends up being all of the detail, all of the nitty gritty, all of the small stuff. And so okay. at the 60% level, that's when it gets reviewed by the village and others. And the changes are made based on whatever changes are permitted to be made. In addition to that, the DEC, who's also a project manager on this project, recommends and brings to the table whatever they can. Because the DEC has another pot of money that they want to participate in adding additional benefits outside of the village. They want to do work in Harrison. They want to do work in Scarsdale. They want to do work in the town of Mamaroneck mm -hmm. so that it helps lessen the impact that we're going to have to deal with. That's the kind of stuff that the DEC would bring to the table at the 60% level. Okay. Okay. So that's Bernie, 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 I gotta move on. I'm sorry, my friend. I have a que I have questions though. You, you I got, got five, I got five Bernie, minutes. I got five Bernie, minutes five to talk. Minutes. You guys talk for three of the, of the Bernie, five minutes. Bernie. What? We, we, we're trying to get to everybody and there's I, a five minute limit. Tom, I'm really sorry. Tom, you're Tom, you talk, you guys talked for we were for answering three your minutes. questions. No, no, you stopped me when I start. I have a list of questions. And then you said, you, I, yeah, I understand that. I get that. But you, I talked for a minute. You talked for four minutes. That's not, that's not talking for five minutes. Uh, I stopped him. Okay, tell, tell, tell him, tell him. Yeah, I, I, I did stop the clock when Tom was addressing your. Okay, so what are, how many, what are we, what am I up to? Uh, I have about 20 seconds left now. All right. It, 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 it's oh, now I got 20 seconds now 30, because 30, I have to, 30, because calm I have down, to, calm down, ask your next question. Okay. My next question is, is if this plan is done, why is not the reservoir being addressed here? If, 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 if this plan is, or if, do you guys know if, the, if this, if this reservoir is, um, if the reservoir is in the plan, with the dam and the plan and the dredging of the reservoir, because my feeling is, 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 is that this is all going to be all for naught if we don't fix that dam and that reservoir, because there's, there's too much water coming down here. You can't, you got to slow it. You have to slow this down. And my other, my other thing is you guys, you need to put more pressure on Harrison, Scarsdale, White Plains, and all of these upriver towns. And you need to, you need, Tom, you need to be our speaking, you need to be our, our, our mouthpieces here. Um, and my other, and my other question is, is who are the contractors doing this? Is the Army Corps coming in and doing this? Or are you going to get, are you going to get some outside contractor who you're going to have to throw off like, you, like the okay. Jefferson Avenue bridge and you're going to have to throw them off the job when they start the job and it becomes just a, a cluster F after okay. that. That was my other question. All what right. does the F mean in the cluster? What does the F mean? I'll say it over the air. I don't no, care. No, all right. Thank you, Bernie. Go to Tim O'Connor. Tim, oh. Tim, unmute yourself, please. Tim. Tim O'Connor and Reed O'Connor, Washington Street. Uh, just to piggyback off the streams, uh, we definitely need the cleaning of the, the Sheldrick without a doubt. Um, I had some of the trustees working, walking around a few, uh, last week or so, walking around for a few days uh it's it really needs uh it's been uh, actually a lot of work needs to get uh cleaned up over there it's been neglected for years um and so um one of the things that i did point out is uh, the industrial section that parallels uh the sheldrake there there is no fencing so when the flood came you know it took everything from the industrial section and floated it right down to the sheldrake 
and there was no barrier or fencing to prevent all that stuff from flowing into the shell drake, causing tires to be there, uh, pallets, and so forth. Yeah. So uh, maybe that could be addressed, uh, you know, while we're coming up with a game plan. The other thing I want to uh, ask is that if you could bring this to the next work session and put this on um, your agenda and fund it right off the bat, that'd be great. Uh, the last thing here is, you know, one of the things that don't work well for us here during rainstorms are the pitching of the streets and the collections of the sewer drains. Uh, Washington Street continually floods uh, and pools at every rainstorm. Uh, the water is standing water. Uh, we have we have some pictures in, so you guys are aware of the situation. Um, other than that, you know, we really def definitely need the support from the board. This is all optics. We're all watching you guys to roll out a plan and to implement something here, the low hanging fruit, as the flood advisory committee calls it. Um, yeah. Hi, this is, this is Rita. I just needed a few minutes. Uh, I'm gonna talk really uh, briefly and kind of piggyback on what um, Maria DeRose said um, earlier about transparency. Um, you know, I don't know if there's a way you guys can create some uh, meeting minutes and have it in a central location where anybody can go onto the site to see what's been done. Um, you know, we are all watching. Um, you know, I live on Washington Street. I've lived through, through the 2007 flood and I lived through Ida. In 2007, we had almost, almost six feet of water in our home and we lost everything on the first floor of our home. And, in, and uh, during Ida, we had almost seven feet of water and we're still living through it. I know everyone's kind of gone on, you know, with their life, but we're, we're still, we're still living. We're still in the hell living through it. Some people are still displaced. Some people have lost their homes. So we are watching, nothing has been done in all the months since Ida. And, you know, I, I, with a heavy heart, try to rebuild back my home knowing that nothing has been done to change the problem or to fix the problem and it can happen again and so we want to know what's going on we want to know what's happening if you don't want our input that's one thing but you need to be transparent about what's happening so we stop asking the questions we need to know at any given time where we're at if it was just a meet and greet meeting why not let us know about it so we don't have to go back and ask the questions and there's not rumors going around, you know, what's going on and what's not happening and why aren't they telling us? We really want to know everything, uh, you know, of real time, what, where you guys are at with this plan. If it's, if you think it's menial, you know, just, we still want to know about it. So okay. I don't know if there's a way to create uh, some meeting you know, minutes you know, or, or a website or somewhere we can just all go and um, know, you know, what's going on with, with the plan. You, you know what, Rita, you, you make a good point. And uh, I think that possibly a solution to that was, would be maybe on the village website to have a link that said flood news. And we, we can update it uh, every time that you know, we make a little progress or even if we, if we uh, backslide and there's a problem, we should put it up there. And uh, this way people can just click on the link and see where we are, where we're going. I think that's a great idea. I don't know if you have a, a project manager per se, but with a timeline of you know target dates, and we can see if we're meeting those target dates and seeing for each phase what what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, any information at least we can see where we're at, and you know maybe maybe it'll it'll cut down on the amount of questions you're going to be asked because you're going to be getting a lot of you know questions. We want answers. We want to know that this is on the forefront of this village and that everybody, this is a priority on any on everyone's um, table. And you know, and, and I will start, when, when I can, I can't promise I'll be there for everyone, but I'll start uh, attending the FEMAC, the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee. So you get the, you get, you get it straight from me. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, uh, Tim and Rita, have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, now let's go to the bodies. Hey you guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, James Abadi. So, you know, uh, on the transparency situation, I'd like to ask a question to the to the board. 
Uh, since the mayor notified everybody about this meeting, can I ask the board, everybody was notified that this meeting was occurring? Um, I'd like I, to, uh, I knew because I asked uh, Jerry a while back what, what was going on with the, uh, with the um, uh, uh, Army Corps. And he told me we got a meeting coming up and it's just scheduling and doing stuff. And I said, boy, it'd be nice to be at that. He goes, well, they, they want to keep it uh, on the lowdown until they get the 60%. So I, uh, I said, yeah, okay. I, I knew about it. And, and, okay, and, so, and there, was, there was an email that Jerry sent out about it. All right, well, uh, my question is, uh, and my question is, as, as a taxpayer, um, I'm asking all the trustees, since you said, Mayor, that you notify everyone about this meeting, and then since this is the main question, I'm asking the other trustees, were they notified about this meeting? Nora, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, I, uh, there was an, an email that went out February 8th saying that um, you know, Jerry was going to try and set up a meeting, but no one, we weren't told about the meeting. Um, and, you know, I think that this is like a lesson. We can't operate this way anymore. You know, the meeting was March 10th. I'm with Tony Gelber. I was on the flood mitigation committee with him for many years before I was a trustee. I was, I, I know that the Army Corps made promises to start answering questions once they got to the design phase. I know that the Army Corps needs to be transparent as part of what the requirement for their process is. And I think it's too bad that two weeks ago after this meeting happened, it wasn't discussed at the meeting. We can't go on that way. And while it's great that Tom is gonna go to the, is gonna keep people informed, the reality, he's not the designated liaison for the Board of Trustees for the flood, for the, we have, there is no designated liaison with the Army Corps. So I think we need to understand what the process is. I think the flood, Mitigation Advisory Committee needs to be very involved in this process. I think Dan, as somebody who has experience working with the Army Corps that none of the rest of us have, and as the liaison, need to be involved in this process. And, you know, it's, you know, government works slowly. This isn't going to be a fast process, but we all need to be informed and, you know, get the questions answered, hopefully before we ask them, but to, to make the process more efficient. But yeah, we all need to work on this project together and make sure that everybody's informed every step of the way. All right, thank, thank you, Nora. And, and, and the, the reason I asked that question is because Mayor Murphy is saying that he notified everyone and he emailed everyone that there, there was a meeting. Um, and you're saying no. Um, you know, that's why I asked the, the, um, the, the Flood Mitigation Committee should be more aggressive and they should have been involved in everything, whether it was going to be an intensive uh, meeting or whether it was not going to be an intensive meeting, it doesn't matter. But Mayor, you're, you're shaking your head, but you just said that you notified everyone, you emailed all the Board of Trustees. I can, and, Jim, and Jim, I can send no. you the email. What's that? I can send you the email. All right, so, so let me ask Dan Nash then, since he's also on the Flood Mitigation Committee, were you aware of that meeting? before or after that that meeting would occur or was going to occur? Unmute. Technical difficulties. Um, the answer is I was not aware of the March, the March 10th meeting. We had, the board had directed Jerry once or some time back to uh, try and set up a meeting with the core and Jerry said he was in the process of doing so. Did not know that the meeting would take place on December 10th. Did not know on the 14th after the board meeting and did not know um, until uh, I got an email that uh, the village manager sent to um, uh, the chair of the uh, of FEMAC uh, that the meeting had taken place. All right, thank you. And, and this is just what I'm trying to say. It's not that, you know, as, as a taxpayer, as a person in, and that lives in the flats, as a person that's been flooded, you know, this this is disheartening because, you know, there's con there's contradictions here, what the mayor is saying, what, what everybody's saying. At the end of the day, we're sitting here still trying to revamp from the flood. And and, and it's and it's hard, to, you know, it's, it's hard for us to hear this. The other, I, I'm going to have another question, Mayor. Um, yeah, and just, just to answer your yeah. question, this is what Jerry wrote. 
I told everybody in the board of trustees that the first meeting was with the staff and the mayor only attended for 10 minutes to thank everyone for their anticipated work. He was doing elevator work at the veterans hospital that day. I was transparent and communicated with you on February 8th, 2022. At the meeting on March 10th, we asked when we could bring in others and they said at the 60% phase of design. So on February 8th, Jerry sent an email telling us that he was gonna meet with the board of, you know, I'm sorry, with the Army Corps and the other you know, governmental agencies. And nobody said, hey, I want to be there or anything like that. Said um, he was going to set up a meeting, Tom. He didn't that, say there was a meeting none, set up. None, of, none of you said, hey, I want to be there or we should participate. I, I thought we heard about it. Let, let I thought we heard about it, Tom. Don't yell. Don't yell. No one on this board said I want to participate. No one on this board said I want FEMAC to be there or anything like that. All right, so so let's listen. Instead of arguing, I, I just I have to bring it up. They shouldn't have to say they wanted to be at the meeting. If 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 it was a known fact that there was going to be the meeting, then I'm sure somebody would have said, "Listen, we need to be there." Or the flood yeah. mitigation committee. Listen, no, Mayor, you said that. You, well, I'm not I'm not trying to attack. Well, you get upset, but you you said that you told everyone there was a meeting. Yeah, now I mean, you, everyone. You said, now you're saying okay. I said everyone knew there was a meeting. Okay, listen, Mayor. And I, and I know I'll, I'll, I'll because I on. asked. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why nobody else asked Jerry when the meeting was going to be and if we could go. But Jerry, you remember the conversation we had? Yep. Yeah, I asked. Can I go? Okay. So, so for the record, anytime there's a meeting, before the meeting, make sure everybody knows, and then we won't have these conversations anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So, that's, what so, I, that's, what, so, that's what I was getting at. So, so Jim, Jim, if you can, so I'll respond to that. So that's okay. I have no problem with that. But I said in that email that the first meeting will be with staff. That's what I said. Yeah. Everyone knew the first meeting was going to be with staff. And that's exactly what it was going to be. Me I'm and Tom. Dan. No, that, that's what Nora, it said in the email. Nora, I'm sorry. I went to thank them for, their, for helping this community. I did not go to participate in the staff meeting. So please don't mischaracterize it. And, and it was totally appropriate and good that I did that. You know, this, this community is getting help from a lot of people. And as the chief elected officer, I went and I thanked those people. And I took the time out of my work day to do this. All right, well, that's, listen, Mayor, we appreciate that, okay? Um, are we just transparency is what I'm, I'm getting at because and, and if we can't trust one another, then where are the taxpayers watching this? Where, where does that leave us? But my other, my other, my other question is, I'm going to move on from that. Um, the, you know, the transfer station, I know you guys are talking about fixing it. Let me ask you a question. Why the other municipalities don't have a transfer station? Mount Vernon, Rye, Harrison, um, Port Chester, they all go right to the dumps, directly to the dump and dump their garbage. And, and, and the other thing is, why do we have a transfer station right on our brook and it's in a residential area in a floodplain? Why can't we try to do away with this transfer station? Because I know it was pushed here years ago yeah. and, it, it, and it stinks. I know it's supposed to be construction, but we smell garbage at all times, at all times. As soon as it gets hot, it's disgusting. Um, sure, I'm just asking, is there a way that we can try to get rid of the transfer station? Because I don't think we should have it here. Honestly, Jim, are, you, are you talking about the village transfer station or the private transfer station? Well, you got you got two. No, I understand. Understand. that's what I mean. We can, most of, most of the municipalities, I, I work sanitation. <clears throat> they go right to the dump. They don't dump any garbage on the floor or on the grounds. They bring their trucks directly to the to the dumps. There's one in Yonkers, one in Mount Vernon, and one in White Plains. We smell garbage all summer long yes. here. It's disgusting. Right. I, I know the town of Marinick has a transfer station over on, on Maxwell. Well, what, uh, what I'm asking you is the construction, which so-called construction. Uh, the did, that's did, the private. That's the private. Right. Why is it that it's allowed to be? That, that's a good question. In the Marinick? Is there anything we can do to try to? Yeah, good question. That, that, that's a good question. And that was a deal probably somebody made a long, long time ago. Uh, and you're right. They've been nothing but. But it was. Plus, Mayor, that's the county's, the suburban handles all of the county material. Yeah, all of the county work, material. They have a contract with them. I used to work with them and they got a contract years ago that nobody has questioned, but it's on a floodplain. It's disgusting. And 
you know, it's honestly, disgusting. somebody should look into it and try to get rid of it. I'm looking That's a good point. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Biden. So Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. Let's get to a voluminous agenda. Public hearing. Public hearing on fiscal year 2022-2023 tentative budget. Uh, I need a motion, please, to open this public hearing. So moved. Second. Well, uh, oh, somebody call the roll. Who's calling the roll? Boggy, do you want me to do it? Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? So four seems to be absent. Mayor Murphy. Aye. All right, Jerry, the floor is yours. Okay, and go into presentation mode and then I'll introduce it. Mayor, a second. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I read it. Okay. Okay, so. Um, the remaining trustees. The uh, the tentative budget was was uh, um, uh, stamped in last week, um, several days before the deadline. Um, the budget, as you already know, um, has been a um, a, a very um, collaborative process with our staff. Uh, they're really getting good at it. Um, we're making some changes regarding how we approach the the uh, the department head level um, uh, budget process, and then uh, we really rely on, or I rely on, um, Augie and Laura, and Dan to complete the process. I do have uh, um, the privilege of making a couple of final edits, and everyone's thrilled about that. But the truth is, um, this budget is is one of our better budgets, and um, we're looking forward to. Uh, to having some additional initiatives presented by the Board of Trustees during the department head level meetings so that they can help the departments with some of the items that uh, they may have left out of this uh, budget. Uh, but there's some significant room in the budget uh, to be able to, um, if the board wants to, um, get up to, um, up to the cap um, and Dan, I'm going to pass it on to Dan so he can explain uh, the numbers and the budget and the stuff that we worked on um, last week and today. So go ahead, Dan. Thank you. And thank you. Yep. So uh, first we'll just start with calculating the, the tax rate and it's just uh, basically a little bit of uh, high school mathematics. Uh, I can... Dan, just make sure you speak up so everyone can yep. hear it. So uh, the... The total general fund budget as, uh, uh, as recommended by the manager is $41,321,290,000. Million, $41 million uh, to calculate the tax rate, uh, we just kind of work backwards. We are estimated approximately $13,455,000 in revenues with an additional $600,000 uh, fund balance. That leaves the remaining balance to be raised through the property tax levy of $27,265,900. Uh, and based on the current uh, valuation of property in the village, uh, it yields a tax rate of $6.04 per $1,000 of assessed value for each year property, and as the board knows, we are at full value, and that's actually allowed us to really maintain a stable uh, tax base and a stable tax rate uh, for the last, I think, five or six years now. Uh, in terms of the property tax cap, uh, this is just kind of a, uh, uh, a summary of the sheet that we fill out. Uh, there's a spreadsheet that the New York State Controller's Office provides to us. Uh, and uh, based on uh, the incorporation of last year's levy, uh, the pilots, the payment in lieu of taxes, available levy growth, uh, the natural growth in the uh, tax base, uh, the tax levy can increase 
by $595,289. But based on uh, a number of those uh, uh, revenues and expenditures, which are going to be, uh, we're estimating less on exp certain expenditures and more on certain revenues, uh, we've managed to uh, uh, fall well below that task cap amount by $311,302. Uh, we're actually looking to increase the overall levy uh, based on our calculations is $283,987. Uh, that's based on looking at the change in the, uh, uh, the levy the, and just counteracting with some of our uh, major cost uh, uh, drivers, which include our benefits, which um, I think right now are somewhere around 80% uh, of uh, salary. Is that, uh, am I remembering correctly, Jerry? No. Nope. Yep. Say that again. 80% uh, is our fringe benefit. Yeah. So 80% so uh, of uh, for every dollar that we pay an employee, 80 cents is added to fringe benefits, which is medical, pension, taxes, et cetera. Uh, FICA. Yep. And this is a 10-year history of our fund balance. This is the total fund balance. Uh, the unrestricted, I believe, is a little over $14 million right now. But as you can see, there's been a, a steady growth in our fund balance you know, because of you know, shrewd financial management. Um, and then uh, you know, we've had some, uh, uh, we try to, even though we adopt a budget, you know, budget is a spending plan. It's, uh, we try to, uh, you know, through the course of the year, manage our resources so we don't spend every last penny. Um, you know, even if we finish a million dollars less, that's only a 3% variance from uh, what's, you know, typically adopted. So 3% over the course of uh, one year, it really isn't a lot of, uh, a lot of flexibility. This is, this but, is uh, very, this is, this is very, Dan, I just want to add, this is very strong management and and while I can't take any credit for, for prior to 2018 or, or, you know, some of 2019, I'll try anyway. But the truth <laughs> is, this is, this is serious, serious focus on the dollar and focus on management. Uh, it, this graph wouldn't look, this bar graph wouldn't look this way if we weren't focused on every dollar around here. Thank well, you. We try, to, we try to be as efficient as the municipalities in New Jersey, Jerry. Yep. Yep. That's not easy to do. Um, this is the uh, a comparison of what are available fund balances as opposed to the annual operating budget over the course of uh, the last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, and the, uh, the final uh, column in yellow is what's proposed for uh, you know, 2022, 23, uh, based on the available unrestricted fund balance and the tentative budget. Uh, it yields a fund balance of approximately 34.2%, sorry, 34.28% of operations. Uh, these are our, uh, the annual growth in the uh, levy uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, again, uh, if you look at $5 million over the course of, uh, you know, 10 years, that's a, you know, half a million dollars a year. Uh, from a whole number, which on a you know was started as a $22 million budget, it's currently or sorry, $22 million levy, and it's currently 27. You know, actually, it's less than five million. It's about four and a half million. So again, we we do try to control our costs. I'm, I'm fairly confident the CPI has probably gone up more uh, in the last 10 years than our tax levy has. No doubt. Yeah, it might have gone up this last year more than our tax levy has. Uh, these are our equalized uh, tax rates for fiscal years 22, sorry, 2012 13 through 2022 23. Uh, what's important to note is, I believe it was the, uh, the, the 2015 16 year, I believe was our first uh, year on uh, full value. Mm -hmm. uh, the other years prior were equalized value. Uh, but again, we've been able to maintain, you know, $6.06, $6.04, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $5.97, $
a very consistent tax rate uh, over the last three years, as opposed to those first three, which we went from 543 to 617 for uh, equalized tax rate. So it's, uh, you know, you, you can see the benefit of having full value uh, with uh, that type of. Uh, you know, just, I'd, I'd like to comment on that a second. Absolutely. You know, uh, I was on the board in 2005 uh, when the town of Rye was the first municipality in Westchester County uh, to go to full value. Uh, and the supervisor was uh, Mr. Bobby Morabito of Sainted Memory. Yeah. And uh, Bobby came to a village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees meeting when everybody's uh, full value was Asian uh, came to them in the mail. And that was the closest I ever saw anybody to, to, to not making it out of a village of Mamaroneck board meeting. And I've had some difficult village of Mamaroneck board meetings, but that was brutal. And the guy stood there for hours and let people, you know, just oh. abuse them and uh, try to explain what had happened. Right. And uh, yeah, I, 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 and, and we're reaping the benefits of Mr. Morabito's uh, foresight today. And I just want to, he's gone to his great reward. And I just want to point out that sometimes people are long, long forgotten. Yeah. Uh, had a good impact. That's a good story. Yeah. Well, they started out as iconoclasts, but then they uh, become the standard. Uh, again, these are our. Uh, assessed values uh, for the village, uh, and uh, you know, we've, you know, seen you know steady growth the last several years, and obviously, uh, with the uh, uh, the post COVID, uh, you know, booms, uh, you know, we're still seeing you know nice growth in our uh, overall valuation, which is part of the uh, component of how we determine our tax levy uh, increase uh, allowability. Uh, this is just a distribution of expenses by, uh, you know, type. Uh, these are the classifications that you'll see in the budget. Uh, obviously, you know, some of these are pretty self-explanatory. Public safety is police, fire, building department. Uh, health is a uh, you know, pretty small number. I think that might just be the uh, uh, the uh, health insurance. Health insurance. No, no, that's the uh, employee benefit. The health may just be the community counselor, et cetera, community for Stanley. Uh, transportation is a uh, highway. Uh, economic assistance is a small number. Culture and recreation, that's the uh, recreation, parks, and harbor. Uh, home and community service, uh, that's some of the, uh, uh, I think that may be some recreation programs in there as well. And then employee benefits is employee benefits. And as you can see, it's 29% uh, you know, of the overall budget. But as uh, we mentioned earlier, it's a significant uh, fringe benefit rate. And those are costs that are totally beyond our control. Uh, these are our retirement expenses uh, for the last several years. Um, and what, what you don't show, what you don't see here is when I first started in this crazy business, uh, the back in the uh, early 2000s, that number was close to zero uh, because that was when you had the uh, stock markets were. Uh, high on the internet craze, uh, and you know it's been uh, dramatically increasing for many years. Uh, but the good news is, is that we are realizing uh, a significant reduction in our pension payments for next fiscal year, yep. uh, going from 3.2 million to just slightly under 2.9 million. Yep. Uh, this is our healthcare, which is not as rosy a. Uh, answer uh, a, a picture as the pension is for this year. Uh, our medical expenses are uh, seem to be ever ever rising. Uh, you know we're going to see an approximate six hundred fifty thousand dollar increase uh, from uh, the current year to the uh, next fiscal year, and you know that's really a number beyond our control. Uh, and if you can't see some of these quotes, I apologize. It's a, I'll try to contrast it a little bit. These are the comparable tax rates for the various levels of uh, government that village 
residents pay taxes to. Uh, the, uh, the top two, you see the red and the purple. The red is the uh, school tax uh, rate uh, for the Ryanex School District uh, below. Then the next two are the uh, county rates paid by Town of Rye residents at Town of Americ residents, because the towns uh, by law are the collection agents for the, uh, the county. Uh, we are the, uh, sorry, that, I said, the slide one over slide six is the village. The two below that are the county, which are collected by the town and the lowest one is the library tax that village residents pay. I'll speed it up a little bit. Yep. Uh, and this is just uh, uh, how the average uh, tax bill is apportioned on an annual basis. Again, for town of Moranic residents, 41% to the school, 25% to the village, we'll about 2% for the library, 11.5% for the county. That's a slightly different uh, breakdown for Moranic residents. Wow. Yep. Uh, then uh, this is the um, the major non-discretionary cost differences uh, in this year's budget. Um, again, uh, the unallocated insurance is going up 260, a decrease of 368 in the pension, a decrease of 86,000 in FICA, which is likely related to uh, the savings we've been able to achieve in our salaries through the renegotiated renegotiation of our union contracts. Uh, workers' comp is going down slightly, uh, but as I noted, health insurance is going up. So those you know, items just alone account for 445000 of the potential allowable $595,000 increase. Yep. But that is uh, countermanded by some of these revenue uh, drivers. Uh, obviously, our interest is not going up. We're uh, broadcasting a decrease in that, but uh, we are forecasting a $730,000 increase in our sales tax, uh, which is based on uh, the results that we've seen uh, to date. Uh, police traffic detail reimbursement, we are increasing that by approximately 290,000. Uh, parking is going up about 55,000. Uh, we're increasing the debt service contribution by nearly $300,000. And some of the miscellaneous fees are going up which is mostly stated is going by 100, 153,000. Uh, and then these are just some of the comparison of tentative budget uh, tax rate increases from our fellow villages. Uh, we are the, aside from the homestead rates in Port Chester and Rybrook, uh, we are the only other community that's seeing a tax rate decrease. Uh, every other community is seeing an increase. But, you know, as you can tell, I think through some of the same economic factors we're seeing with these revenue enhancements and a major decline in the pension. Uh, the tax rate changes do seem to be uh, somewhat, uh, even the tentative budget is somewhat reasonable and uh, consistent across all you know, the various villages. Uh, just summary of the major items, uh, proposed tax levy increase of 283,000, again, 311 less than what we're allowed. A functional proposed tax rate decrease of 1.69%, uh, tax rate decrease of 10 cents per thousand of assessed value, uh, you know, uh, increase in total expenditures of 4.6%, uh, decrease in pension contribution, but large increase in healthcare costs. Uh, what I didn't add here was uh, we are proposing to add positions to uh, staff a planning division and an engineering department. Uh, and we're all we're doing that all within the uh, allowable tax cap. But uh, you know, topics for future discussion. Uh, you know, capital, capital, capital. Uh, we, uh, we we need to talk with the board and you know make sure that uh, the but the priorities in the capital budgets are aligned. And uh, you know, we're working on the items that the board wants us to work on. Uh, the departmental budget presentations will be taking place over the next several weeks. And we do need to discuss village wide fees and charges uh, that uh, may yield some additional revenue. Uh, again, 41 million 321 290, tax later 27265902. And this is how we just get that. Uh, and this is the uh, budget work sessions for the next month. 
beginning on Wednesday, uh, going through April 12th. Uh, we have the public hearing tonight and <clears throat> have tentatively scheduled uh, the budget adoption with the board <clears throat> the grace on April 25th, which is their second regularly scheduled meeting in April. And that concludes the budget presentation. Thank you, Dan Sarno. Very much. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Thanks all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's a question from Glenn. That's going to share your screen. Yeah. Oh, yes. Glenn. I'll let, I'll let Glenn in. Yeah. yeah I got confused. Start working on two computers. We got Glenn? Hey, quick question. The uh, tax rate is going down 1.65%, but we're actually going to be increasing by 1.01% um, what we collect in taxes, mm -hmm. correct? That's right. You got that right on. Okay, thank you. You got it. The, that uh, point out is, and I'll do more with uh, when we discuss um, with, with the budget is it's extremely tight budget. It's um, the revenues need to have some discussion. Okay. And the biggest thing, we have to find money for capital projects. There are, are we have a backlog of capital projects. And at some point we're gonna have to start to address and, and have additional funds to deal with them. You simply can't um, uh, 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 bond every single capital project. Eventually you do have to start to pay for them. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I need a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Second. No, not, well, not close, adjourn. Yeah, I think you're right. Adjourn. Please Please open. adjourn. Okay, adjourn, so moved. Second. Uh, who's Sally Corroll? Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Mayor, Mur Mayor Murphy? Hi. Uh, I just want to thank uh, the staff. This is welcome news. Uh, board should be happy. Uh, everyone in the community should be happy. Uh, th this is a, a, a budget that is fiscally sound, a budget that is uh, well thought out and provides for the needs of our community. And uh, it, it of course will be looked at extensively by the Board of Trustees. But I really, really want to thank staff for the excellent work they've done. Bravo. Thank you. Uh, public hearing on PLLB 2022 to exceed the tax cap. Uh, this is something we do every year. Uh, we, we vote on a resolution uh, to open a public hearing so that if we need to exceed the tax cap, uh, we have uh, the ability to. I consider this you know, kind of like walking a tightrope, but you, you have the uh, net underneath you. <clears throat> uh, so I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Sally, call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? No, I'm being consistent. I don't believe that we ever should see the cap. Lucas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tafour is absent. And trust, I'm um, sorry, Mayor Murphy. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, like I said, what, what this is, this doesn't mean that we're exceeding the tax cap. This is prudent government. Uh, this is being uh, careful. And if the tax cap had to be, you know, if, we, if we had a flood, if we had a, a, an emergency uh, that required us to break the tax cap, like uh, an, another pandemic, 
and a, a flood on top of that, which we all know that can happen, we would be ready to do it. Uh, any questions or concerns or comments from the board? No, just the process is we have to keep this open until we adopt the budget and then we decide I, I, whether or no, not. I make a motion that we adjourn this to April 25th. Second. Well, we, uh, Sally, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? No. Lucas? Yes. A four? Absent. Okay. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, order the bills. Item 2A, resolution authorizing budget amendments for the following items. Uh, from the general fund, uh, the first one is for uh, meter, street meter repair, it's funding for IPS invoices for printer repair services, modem upgrades uh, for the village. That's 6,308. The next is uh, safety building equipment to fund purchase of office safe, it should be safe building department. Okay, to fund purchase of office safe to secure daily building department receipts and other sensitive documents. Uh, that's taking $1,755 and putting it to the safe, safety building equipment fund. Central data to fund purchase of projector and screen to be utilized in the main conference room is where I'm now sitting, 123 Mamaronic Avenue. Appropriated fund balance, 2420 And that, this is right. So it's going to recreation salaries. Is that right? Uh, it, it should be um, 1680 is uh, 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 IT. It should the be number's IT. right. The number's right. The, the description's wrong. Sorry about it that. It should be IT department. Sorry about that. It's all right. Yep. Uh, off street parking to off. The fund four months of utility electric charges for parking lots, lights, do <laughs> unanticipated increase in electrical charges. This is taking $5,000 and putting it to the Wall Street Electric Fund. For those that are proposed uh, budget amendments, I need a motion. We have discussion. Yeah, sure. Jerry, could you give us uh, some background uh, in terms of um, the AV equipment for the um, boardroom? Is this so that we can continue to have join Zoom and in-person meetings, or is this, what is this for? For the projector and the screen for the uh, for the conference room that, that Tom and Lou are in now? It's to upgrade that equipment. That equipment's antiquated. We have trouble with it all the time. So we're upgrading, upgrading the equipment. That's 123 Mamaronic Avenue. It's here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, on that note, on yeah. that note, we're going to do something in the courtroom too, right? Yeah, we have that stuff set up. Yeah. Okay. And then the safe, the safe is a, uh, well, it's, it's part of the changes in the building department. It's part of the changes that we're making to uh, yeah. follow proper procedures in the building department. Oh, it, oh. I, I, is, is, a safe, oh. is the safe used, you know, in the beginning of the day and the end of the day or during the day? Uh, it's, used, it's used when we're not there. So you take the drawer out when you get there, and you put the drawer back in when you're leaving. But yeah, right now, just, yeah. Just as a matter of curiosity, I don't mind the money. It's not not a lot, but we have a huge safe on the second floor. Yeah, this and, this is you know, for, for, that has plenty of room for documents and a lot of other things, you know, cash drawers, etc. Yeah, this is this is something uh, that we need to have. Um, with our camera in place, which is in place now, and we need to have it right there in the in the office. All right. Somebody want to make a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, Sally. Trustee Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. And Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, abstract of manual vouchers is the first. Do we have manual tonight? Yeah, we did, right? Yeah, small amount. 
abstract of manual characters. Uh, what's the amount? I don't have the it. It's twenty four hundred dollars for a postage. Twenty four hundred dollars for postage. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns? No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ready? Uh, oh, here it is. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Sally, please. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Thank you. Uh, next up is the manu the, the ordered vouchers, and tonight's grand total is six hundred sixty-four thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars sixty-six cents. Any questions or concerns? No. It's pretty small. Big. Little Dan, a little bit. Dan. Page two. All right, uh, down to the bottom, uh, the third, the third from the uh, bottom, uh, the one time to uh, Benita West LLC. It says, um, I'm not quite sure. Are we selling this? We. I'll, I'll the, explain it. Dan, I'll, I'll pay explain it because he had to explain it to me. Those are lean payoffs, Dan. So, so they didn't pay the taxes, and you're you're selling it off. Is that is that what that is, or what? I'm sorry. That's the tax liens that we already sold that somebody came into the winter to pay off. So we have to pay off money at the wets, and they can pay at the window. Okay. And on page five, we uh, and seven, there are two entries uh, to the auditors: one for twelve thousand, and one for thirty uh, thirty one thousand. Mm -hmm. It's the same explanation. That's okay. I is it just two for two different aspects of it or yeah. one is for the audit for the court and the other is the village wide audit. The audit for the court gets paid out of uh, eleven ten. The audit for the village wide audit is out, paid out of uh, thirteen twenty five. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or concerns? You need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All the roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, <coughs> next up is uh, new business. Resolution A, authorizing Arcadius proposal for CMOM updates and additional phase one repairs. Uh, this is to investigate deficiencies in our sanitary sewer system. Jerry, would you like to add any? Uh, Mayor, this is a plan required um, with our um, uh, same the sound situation where um, uh, we provide a document of our capacity, how we manage it, our operations and our maintenance of our system. And so uh, it's extensive. It's extensive because we're involved with uh, the Save the Sound lawyers, so uh, it runs into a, a, a few dollars to get the uh, to get the work done that they require uh, to be in the plan. So, and then after this point, the plan will come to the board for the board to review, so that it's finalized at our, our board level, and then provided to uh, to uh, the Save the Sound. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Trustee Natchez. Jerry, on uh, the capacity study, is that broken down by area or is it for the, the, the total capacity or? Yeah, no, it's, it's not broken down by area. It's a general um, maintenance operation and management program. Yeah, it provides what it provides. Um, what it's really a more of a maintenance plan than anything else. It's not it's not broken down by areas. Uh, there so may be some really maps, but that's it. Okay, but it's not really a capacity study then. No, it's not a study at all. It's a plan. It's all. It's just a plan for how we're going to operate and manage our sewer system. That's really what it is. CMO. Yeah. CMO. Capacity management operation and maintenance. Okay, uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Sally, please. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. 
Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, 4B, resolution authorizing tax surcharge settlement with 229 Union Avenue uh, for 311 East Boston Post Road. Uh, we discussed this in executive session with uh, the attorney who's handling this, uh, Mr. Stout, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Any questions or concerns? Just a question in the uh, anticipated budget, has the um, social priorities been, uh, these and others that we know that are coming down the pike, have they been included uh, in calculations of, uh, for the total revenue? Yeah, we're still good on, on what we anticipate is gonna come in. Uh, and we're usually very good with the amount that we add to the budget we never exceeded, or and to my knowledge, while I'm here, we haven't exceeded that amount that we added to the budget in previous years, including our current. I, you, I was going the other way, that, that this would decrease the amount that comes in and that been factored in. That was what I was. Um, I, think, I think what you're seeing is some larger, some larger maybe cases being settled uh, because it took longer, um, but at some point, we have to be close, right, Dan and Augie? We got to yeah. be close to the end here. No, absolutely. And you know, this is part and parcel of uh, you know moving to full value as opposed to the right. Or you know, it's a you know, yeah. this full value. Uh, this is dealing with an old assessment from when we were assessing you. You see, it's 2012, 2013, 2014. So you know, I think we are seeing again more stability uh, because you have more frequent. Uh, Revaluation and, and what, what this reflects is when the village of Mamaroneck had its own assessors department. That that's why we're dealing with this tonight. Uh, now our assessing is formed out to the town of Rye and to the town of Mamaroneck. For years we had a gentleman here uh, of sainted memory, Mr. Bud Wright, uh, who did an amazing job as the village assessor. But when Mr. Wright uh, retired, we uh, gave the operation to both the town of Mamaroneck and the town of Rye. Uh, I'm not sure, Mayor, how many are left, but there, there aren't too many left, but we're not. Mr. We're not. Mr. Tippett has his hand up. Glenn knows. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, actually, this should be the last one that, um, we represent ourselves. I think this is the uh, the last case that's uh, pre-2015, at least on the town of Rye side. I think we're pretty much done on the Mamarnik side. A mm -hmm. uh, uh, couple of questions. Number one, how much is the settlement for? How much is the village? Uh, how much is the library? And how much is the school? What, what's the breakdown of, uh, of what it is? We, we don't do the school here. You'll never see a school number here. Well, not you will. This would be the last school number you uh, do because that we used to collect for the school back then. No, we, we never, never see one the again. Village, but... the, the village of Mamaroneck has never collected for schools. Uh, schools are collected in Westchester County by town and city governments. Village okay. governments never what, collect. For what, schools. what what is the what is our refund for the um. How much are we uh, refunding for the village and the library on, on these three years? It's in the third whereas clause, 82. Third whereas clause, $82,818. Okay. And uh, we also have the 2015 to 2021 coming from the town of Rye. Have we gotten that one yet? Town of Rye already approved it for, for the, uh, the same. 2015 to 2021. Have, have we have we gotten that paperwork yet from the town of Rye? No. Their board's already approved it. But 311 East Boston Post Road? No, I don't I don't yeah. think so. No, I don't okay. think we have that. Yeah, both both were settled at the same time. It was its directors and basically they were they were they were going after uh they've been battling for 10 years. So you do okay. have that one coming in. And you probably got about 20 coming in on the uh, on the uh, town of Amarnik side. Most of them dated uh, 2016, 2017. They're working their way. That those are active court cases. They're working their way through. You'll see them in the next two months. Thank you. This, 
This is 311 East Boston Post Road. Yeah, but there are additional years. I think that's what Glenn's saying. We only have three years or more. Okay. The, the, these, these are the years when we were an assessing unit. That's why we're dealing with this. Yeah, but I don't have what he's asking for. I don't have that communication yet. That, that we, we are really only voting here on issues that were, you know, pre-2014. Is that when Bud left, 2015? Yeah, that's yeah. where we got the... Yeah. yeah. All right. I need a motion. So, so moved. Oops. Or second. <laughs> All right, Sally, call the roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. And next up is second round of communication of board. That's it. We were responsible for the first three years. And then um, the town of Rye settled uh, 2015 to 2021, and they voted on it in December. Thank you. So uh, I had uh, just a couple of uh, quick questions. Under um, audit of the bills, we have another $41,000 charge. That would be for the fire truck final charge. Um, is the fire truck also getting some work done over at, at Excelsior before we actually get it? Or is 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 the total now finished? That's the new truck we just got. I, I don't know why a new truck would be at Excelsior. No, no it's, it's well, something. We, we bring it over to Excelsior to put bells and whistles usually when we get new equipment. No, no, no. Oh, they're doing it there at the dealer now. They're doing that at the dealer now. On the way of the oh, okay. <coughs> Excelsior has gone the way of the Dota. Yeah, Excelsior. Oh, okay. Explain that what Mr. Yeah. Sonoff just pointed out. Yeah, I think uh, Excelsior has gone the way of the Dota. Okay. Yep. It's extinct. It's yes. no more. It's the rest of life. It has ceased to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we got our final. We got our final total in. Uh, most of it's already bonded. Uh, it's all bonded, so we're we're good. Everybody have a wonderful Easter. Uh, COVID numbers, uh, hospitalizations are down again. ICU cases are down again. Just you know, be a little careful. You got a variant out there, but you know what? Start enjoying your lives again. Have a wonderful time, and personally. I'm a rabbit ears guy first when it comes to chocolate bunny rabbits. <laughs> Every, everybody enjoy. Bye bye. You too. Good night. Uh, report from the village manager. Uh, Mayor, it's late. I don't have a report this evening. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, sir. Uh, report from the clerk treasurer. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Thank you. Report from the village attorney. Nothing from me, Mayor. Uh, minutes, Commission, Boards and Committees, Minutes of the Board of Trustees Work Session and Regular Meetings of March 14th, 2022. Minutes of the Board of Architects Review Meeting of March 1st, 2022. Minutes of the Planning Board Meeting of January 26th, 2022. Minutes of the Tree Committee Meeting of January 27th and February 17th, 2022. Alrighty, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good evening. Good night. Yeah, bye-bye. Oh.